Booyah! What's up, people? It's Robert Bassano. Planate Veritas. Flat Plain Truth. That's what Planate stands for. It's Latin. It stands for Flat Plain. Anybody want to look that up on Google? Look it up. Because there's somebody out there who thinks they know what the name of the channel actually means. But I guess, but I guess they don't speak Latin. <laughs> Planate Veritas means Flat Plain Truth. That's it. There's going to be people who come up with different definitions, but for me, that's what it means for me. You guys know my motto, right? I want you to always remember this motto. If you ever hear it again, and when you do hear it again, it's probably going to be because you watched that movie, Training Day. But then Denzel Washington says, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Yeah, that's me. That's what this is all about, people. There are going to be people out there who are going to say, hey, I think this, I think that. This is my idea. This is his idea, whatever it may be. But if you're going to base all of your theories, your hypothesis, your conclusions, your thesis, your independent, uh, uh, dependent variables on conjecture with no reference or cited proof, documented proof, I'm sorry. You can't just ex deal with the idea that people are going to believe what you're saying because you're just a nice person. You could be a bad person, too. But if you bring forth the proof to support what it is you're basing it on, people will start to take the shit a little bit more serious, right? Okay. So I started this journey, I think, sometime last year. And uh, it's been a fucking fantastic ride, man. It's been fantastic and we've been uncovered all kinds of things together man I first I started out with one group of people and then I went off on my own and then I ended up with this final group and these guys have been like my brothers man and I'm not gonna say they like my brothers they are my brothers and I got brothers out there in the chat too I got Martin I got Aaron he's new to the scene everybody I, I, I love the name of everybody but you know, you know who you are. If you follow me, rather you subscribe or don't subscribe. If you've commented, if you saw my videos, if you made a, a, a supporting comment or a competing comment or just told me I was just, you a dumbass, Robin, how could you say this? You don't know what you're talking about. Regardless, you are my brothers and sisters because I read everything that you guys say. I read everything. And you, you've actually worked to help me keep on my A game, all right? Sometimes I give you an A minus game. There have been times where I gave you a B game and I correct myself. But you know what? You guys have uh, kept this exciting and you're gonna to continue to keep it exciting. The whole objective and goal for me coming onto social media and sharing this information, sharing my insight, my analysis, my research, is to encourage the rest of you to go out there and un just literally look under every rock, go through every crevice, look for everything you possibly can. Don't just accept or believe what one person says or, or a group of people say. You know, it, it, the motto speaks for itself. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. And we are still working to prove a lot of this shit, man. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave the, re I'm going to talk about the reasons why I've taken, I'm taking a different journey and going in a different direction after the show. Okay. But we're going to continue on from part one of the Van Allen fraud and truth about radiation, because this has been like a long awaited thing that a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about because I, I actually went through all of the damn documentation. So um, I don't want anybody to get all upset with me or whatever have you. You know, I think that I put out over, I think about a hundred videos and, you know, they start off real rough. You know, I was like this diamond that was found somewhere deep in the earth. And then they got a little bit better and, and got even better and then better. But I never changed who I was, man. I'm always going to be me. And no matter where I go and what I do, I'm always going to be me. So 
So no further ado, we're going to continue on with this with with this 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 education journey that we've been going on together. And I want everyone out there, if you don't have access to the secure cloud I created specifically for this venture, feel, please feel free. I'm gonna leave up my my email. I, send me your email. I will give you access to the cloud. There are people who have access to it, and man, let me tell you, there's enough information in that cloud for every single one of you to do a different show every goddamn week. Because I didn't even talk about everything that's in that cloud file, all right? I thought I'd be able to do that, but it, it was just a lot of information and I was doing it on my own pretty much. So, you know, I would pick and choose, you know, what I could talk about, what I could use, what I couldn't use, you know, when I wanted to talk about it. But this was a mosaic that I was putting together from the very first video that you see on my channel to this last final video, it all, if you if you spend the next the rest of this year and next year watching those videos from minute one all the way to the end, you're gonna get the same, you're gonna have not only a complete understanding, but a better understanding where you are, how you may have got here, what the hell's really going on, and What's truth, what's fiction, what's real, what's not real, and where you think you may go after that, okay? So um, we're gonna continue on with this. Um, the channel will stay up. I thought about taking the whole thing down, but I got a lot of emails, people like, ah, shit, don't take it down, don't take it down, don't take it down, just leave it up, man, just leave it up, leave it up. So I'm gonna leave it up, but I won't be commenting. Um, I will respond to private, messages but i won't be commenting on the channel uh you won't see me out there in nobody else's channel you won't see me you know using some sock puppet account there might be somebody out there trying to impersonate me but as you can see you know i like changing my my icon all the time so you know um you guys will know if it's me or not you know i don't do that shit. so if somebody's out there doing some foul shit, you know it ain't robert and if you're connected with me all you guys do is email me or skype me and I'll tell you, yeah, it's me or not. I do things in my own person. So if I don't like what the fuck you're saying, I'm gonna say I don't like the fuck you're saying. I'm not gonna try to hide behind nothing, okay? So that's really what it comes to. Juan Carlos says Robert is John Crow Triple Seven because they sound the same, same name. <laughs> that's what Juan Carlos is saying. It's funny. All right, so we're gonna. I'm gonna do share screen. We got Robert Shortman in here. We got John. Still don't want to say his damn last name because he's afraid of somebody going to find out he actually talking inside the closet. Ain't nobody coming after you in that damn closet. But I got number love for him, man. John has really, I will say this, um, there were through, through the six, I think, what was it? The 16 weeks that I was working on my graduate school coursework, um, I was running by some ideas for John. He wasn't helping me with my paper, but I wanted an outside independent view and opinion because John's a scientist. He worked for the army in genomics and, and DNA testing and, you know, that whole works. I'll let him, you know, spit out his resume because he and Robert Shortman are going to be joining together to do some things. Um, and uh, you guys should enjoy that as well. But, um, Literally, I, I want to say that um, John helped me tighten up a lot of stuff that I was talking about, trying to get a lay person. And when I say lay person, this was a Ph.D. reviewing my papers. It was like 15 pages. And he had no subject matter knowledge of what I was talking about with regard to artificial intelligence and uh, computational neuroscience and, and, and biophysics. So through that whole period in time, you know, I'm going back and forth. This guy, you know. John was giving me some really, you know, some serious, you know, uh, critical input and, and challenging me. And I ended up getting an A on that paper. I got a 95 out of 100 and the professor recommended that I stop wasting my time on the graduate level and move straight to the PhD. He even offered to write me a recommendation uh, for the Stanford PhD program at Carnegie Mellon. So, um, you know, I'm still thinking about it, but the PhD don't mean shit be honest with you. There's just a lot more work and how much more of what I know that I don't, that I don't already know. Right? So John, thank you very much for that, man. I really appreciate it. You know I'm going to really hitting you up on a regular basis anyway. 
So, uh, and I also shared it with Robert Shortman as well. He gave some outside uh, input. And, um, you know, it's always good to get those opinions from, from your peers. And uh, these gentlemen are definitely my peers. So I'm going to remain gentleman-like for this show. I'm going to drop some F-bombs, but I ain't going to go after nobody personally. That's just not my thing. It's not my forte. It's never been. So, uh, you know, that's just me. All right? So let's continue on where we left off last time with regard to radiation. Actually, you know, because Van Allen is the first thing that I put in the title of the show, let's go to that lying ass bastard. Okay? Um, so here, I wanted to show you guys this. This is a letter. Just so that you guys, I'm going to put the link up in here for you people. Um, let me do this real quick. So everybody can follow along with this. The link's in the chat for everybody in the group chat. And I'm going to put this paper up. All right. This is so that you guys can also do your, your research as well. You know, after this is all over with, you might want to continue with a lot of this stuff. But there's a there's a shitload of data. I mean, there's a whole entire, you won't believe how much information there is on Van Allen. This guy's got, there's more information about this guy and what he was doing than any scientist that existed 20, 30, 40 years before this dude. There's more data on this guy than there is on Henry Lorenz, Albert Einstein, Max Planck, Maxwell, all those guys. I mean, literally, it's all there at the University of Iowa. It's all in their database. But I thought that this letter would be interesting for you guys to see. This is a letter from NASA, August 13th, 1953. And uh, James, Jimmy here, got his fucking feelings uh, hurt. All right? He got a letter from NASA while he was the director of physics and astronomy at the State University of Iowa. And they say, Dr. Van Allen, the selection of the scientific payload of the first two pioneers for the IQSY. Now, the IQSY is the international, um, I think, uh, quantum science year or something like that. Um, I'm still looking into that, too, because I thought that was kind of weird. Um, I can't find much data on that, but if anybody else can, you know, be my guest. And they say to him, I regret that your cosmic ray experiment was not among those approved for these missions. Selection was made after careful study and evaluation process by the appropriate NASA subcommittees, the Pioneer Program Office, and the Space Sciences Steering Committee. Unfortunately, payload capability of the Pioneer spacecraft is such that only a small percentage of those experiments proposals could be included. We certainly appreciate your interest in the Pioneer program and wish to thank you for your proposal. In the very near future, we will be offered the opportunity to submit a proposal for the payload of the third and fourth Pioneer spacecraft, and I encourage your response. The continued interest of you and your colleagues is our best assurance that the Pioneer program will meet its objectives. And that was signed by Homer E. Newell, Director, Office of Space Sciences. Okay? So think about this. NASA says that the Van Allen radiation belts were actually discovered by this guy, by Van Allen, in 1958. Okay, now he didn't make it onto the first two pioneer missions. Now, what's interesting about this is that in when we go to the years of the atmospheric testing, okay, 1945 to 1963, all right, what's interesting about this is that um, Van Allen at the time, I think in the late 40s yeah i think in the yeah in the mid mid to late 40s he actually joined the navy he he was i think he was a lieutenant commander and actually got promoted to a commander because he developed this he developed this firing fuse okay he developed the firing fuse for the army to basically conduct this testing this trinity atomic th th these uh, atmos upper atmospheric testing okay and as you can see, they lay, they tell you all of the um, the uh, 
the bombs that were set off and the, the test that they conducted. This was all due to Van Allen. Okay, they were testing his fuses. Now, what's interesting about this, this is a quick time um, video. This is a bomb, this is an airdrop off the fat man type weapon dropped on Nagasaki. Let me see if we can even see that video. I'm gonna let it load up for a quick second here. Uh, we got a few others here. We'll let that download as well. We got the Buster Jangle test. We got the Tumblr Snap Dog test. We got the Desert Rock 4 test. Uh, let's check this one out. The Ivy Mike slow motion close up for the fireball. Uh, what else we got? We got um, here's the Ivy King detonation. And then the final one I'm going to show is that I'm not going to show all of them. But um, after these tests were conducted, all right, there had to be follow up upper atmospheric testing, okay, in the early 50s, all right. They kept doing these tests, but they wanted to see how much radiation, that's what they claim. They wanted to see how much radiation uh, affects. They talk about nuclear weapons, physics, and technology. And he says the fact that radium, we talked about that, compounds are permanently at a higher temperature than their surroundings. Therefore, that radium is con constantly emitting heat. It was first pointed out by Curie and Lord Florida in 1903, and they found that radium emits heat at the rate of about 100 calories per hour per gram of radium. In its whole life, radium emits a quantity of heat of the order of 10 to the 10 calories. When it is remembered that the union of hydrogen and oxygen to form one gram of water causes an evolution of 3,900 calories, the enormous store of energy within the atom is, in this case, a radioactive substance will be realized. Okay? So, here we are together talking about radiation, right? And when you talk about radium, I don't know too much about radium at all. This is like my first time even really going through this. But someone emailed me and made a comment on the channel talking about um, what is actually creating the heat. Is it actual radiation? And from reading this, right, as seen from the quote above, the existence of atomic energy was known within a few years of the discovery of radioactivity in 1896. No chemical or physical process, listen to this, no chemical or physical process was found that could change the rate of release of energy by radioactive decay until the discovery of uranium fission in 1939. Here are some documents that survey that history and relate the basics of nuclear weapons physics. Now I want you guys to hear that again. No chemical or physical process was found that could change the rate of release of that energy by radioactive decay until the discovery of uranium fission in 1939. Now, we all know that fission is some sort of other artificial process that needs to be initiated, right? Am I wrong on that, John, Robert? No, I think you're correct on that um, okay. because you get natural radiation and then forced radiation, which is man-made, so I think that's... Yeah, so, so when they talk about radioactive decay in space, what the fuck is the sun doing if there's no chemical or physical process? What the fuck is the sun doing? Hey, Robert. Go ahead. Hey, sorry to interrupt you, man. I just seen Hank Hill in the chat. Yeah. And I've been emailing. I've been saying in the chat, hey, Hank, send me your email. But he hasn't chimed in yet. So, hey, Hank, send your email. <laughs> <laughs> send it to Robert or send it or, or or do something. Don't be blowing me off. <laughs> All right, sorry Robert, go ahead. So when we read this, right? You we we can all agree that scientists have been studying the fucking sun 
for as long as we can remember. Back, I mean, they're talking about all the way back to 1896. Discovery of radioactivity in 1896. But when they follow it up with a sentence saying no chemical or physical process was found that could change the rate of release of that energy by radioactive decay until the discovery of uranium. I'm sorry, last I checked, did we fucking find uranium in space? Is there some sort of uranium fission in space? I doubt, no, I don't think so. But my question is, they're telling us that there's some sort of chemical and physical process going on with the sun, with, with, with some sort of fluid plasma being released and ejected from the sun, giving off these high charged radioactive particles and, 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 and neutrinos. So again, I'm, I'm not that deep in the physics yet, but when you when I read no chemical or physical process was found that could change the rate of release of that energy, and then I correlate that to what the sun, what they're telling me the sun is doing, this this goes along with what Eric Dollar was saying. The sun is not burning shit. Especially with it's the neutrinos. You know, with the size that the neutrinos were, you know, power to the minus. And the fact they couldn't see them really. Yeah, I mean you the sun can't be burning anything. I agree with Dollar. I agree with him when I talked to him. I didn't know it at the time. I wanted to hear what he had to say about it. But I mean, this 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 quote up here was actually put out by Sidney Starling in 1929, Electricity and Magnetism for Advanced Students. Electricity and Magnetism. So maybe the sun is some sort of fucking transformer from somewhere else. But it's not, it doesn't seem like it's burning anything. People will say, well, hey, how do you feel the heat or whatever, you know, in the atmosphere and in the sun when it comes out? How do you know that's what the sun is actually giving off? How do you know that that's not some sort of atmospheric particle fission type of reaction that's creating the heat? Here, they're talking about radium. The discovery of radium. Radium is giving off the heat. See, this is now going to give me to look into this radium a little bit more and what its uh, uses are. Dual uses, multiple uses. Right? Statement of the problem of building an atomic bomb. This this is a good piece of uh, information to read for all of you guys. Um, but I want to. What I want to do is I want to show these videos right now. Oh shit! Can I play this? play dude don't tell me that. i can't play this video don't tell me that oh oh the file is corrupt well that's one file corrupt let's see if this one can. second file corrupt ah damn third file corrupt oh we got problems here people okay i see where this is going so let's do this. Let's do this. Let me see if I can go direct here. Let me see if I can go direct. Let me see if I can go direct in this bad boy. Let me see if I can go direct in this bad boy. They won't even let me play any of the videos, man. Let me see what's going on here. The day of Trinity. Yeah, that's 88 minutes, dude. I ain't playing that. Well, this is kind of messed up. This is messed up. Let me see something here. Oh, this is this ain't good, man. This definitely ain't good. It's, for some reason, they want files are corrupted, man. So let's see this. It's all in quick time, so let's 
see what happens here. Let me throw this link in the chat for people. There might be people who might be able to who want to see this. I'm gonna throw it in chat for everybody. The videos are all there for you. I got a brand new system, so I know I got this all on my computer. Let me go to the new, let me go to Nevada Energy. Yeah, they won't even let me see the videos. Well, gallery of nuclear test photos. Yeah, it'd have been good to play those videos. My apologies on that, but you guys can have your fun through that website. I thought we were gonna have a good time with that one. All right, let's continue on here. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is Van Allen claim to have launched raccoons, a cross between a balloon and a rocket, okay? A balloon and a rocket. This was one that they did in the 1950s, okay, in the Arctic. I hope this shit plays. It's supposed to be a video. Is this a video or a picture? No, this is an expedition photo. Is it? Yeah, this is an expedition photo. My bad. I thought that was a video. That's one of the photos right there. Let me go back. Um, let's take, I'm gonna take you guys to one I don't think that they were really up on cameras back in those days. Let me show you one of these damn balloons here. Okay, here's an Arctic expedition balloon in the 1950s. Now, now I claim to be putting these balloons up and putting a, attaching a rocket to it. So it get to extreme altitude. And then he says that he was able to get those rockets to 2,400 and 10,000 kilometers. These balloons have a capability somewhere around 150,000, maybe 250,000 feet. All right, that's just under the carbon line. And three foot rocket wasn't that big at all. I'll actually show you guys a picture of what the rocket looked like. Hang on for a second. Got all these photos. He was doing all this shit with the Navy. So here's a picture of what one of those rockets looks like. Here's one of them here. You can see how they're holding on to it, right? Launching it from a ship, a Navy ship in the Arctic. Now we all know why they would go to the Arctic, right? Because if it's the center surface of the Earth, then they'd be directly 90 degrees, right? Which means. They had to have known um, what the Earth actually looks like. So here goes, here goes another picture of one of these balloons. Here's another picture. All right. Here's another picture. This is this is the probably the fuel source for the rocket. Here's the rocket itself. This is the three foot tip of it. This is all fuel here. Now, this kind of changes my my opinion of of what he might have been able to do because I thought it was just the whole just the three foot rocket. I didn't know they were attaching all this shit. I thought just all the fuel was right in here, but it wasn't. It was all in here. Launched a high altitude balloon, they get it up there, fire this bad boy off, and it goes to 2,400, 10,000 kilometers, right? But the second thing you have to think about is this. We all know that anything going above the Kármán line loses its aerodynamic stability and control, right? So this rocket was just based on just sheer fucking acceleration and velocity. But once it got to where it needed to go to, it was up there for a short amount of time and then came right back down. Another satellite being launched on a fucking balloon. 
So this was back in the 1950s. And we all know, you guys know that I started talking about them damn balloons when I first came on the scene, right? I might not have been the first one to talk about it, but I put a lot of stress on this. And we all have to ask ourselves, there were no satellites back in the day, so if you wanted to get into satellite technology, how would you do it? On a fucking balloon. There you go, right there. There goes a the satellite at the bottom. That's how they were doing it back in the 50s. I think that's how they're still doing it to this day. I showed you guys the, the Isranj um, space station. I showed you the Isranj space station um, balloon launch list. And um, there are a few names on the, on that list of objects they actually claim were launched on rockets, but they went up on balloons. So these are some other pictures, these are some other documents here, stuff that he developed. Okay, this talks about spacecraft missions Pioneer 4. Let's read this. Let's see what it is. This is June 17, 1959. Okay. What are you saying here? What are you saying? God damn it. Okay, it's just a standard Western Union message. No reason saying shit. Hang on, check it. Here we go. You guys get the gist of this. So, DOD fact sheet. You have all kinds of reports in here. Hang on a second. Okay, you see the title of this document? Further detailed analysis of telemetry records obtained by Explorer 4 satellite concerning geomagnetically trapped radiation. Now, if you wanna know if it's possible for the South Atlantic anomaly, the Van Allen belts to get down to 200, what was it, 200 kilometers off the coast of Brazil, then that's how magnetism is playing a role. Electromagnetic field for, field area is trapping radiation at high altitudes from what they did on the upper atmospheric testing. Is that fact? I don't know. The radiation went somewhere, didn't it? It went somewhere, but it didn't go out into space. No, exactly. So I think it disappeared it within that. And this document is 125 pages. 125 pages. I'm going to share this in the chat as well so everyone can see that as well. We'll follow along. It's 125 pages. Do we have time to look at it? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's not going to leave around 4.15. Robin and I probably continue on this for a while, but I'm going to skim through this. This is 30 November of 1966. Okay? I think I might want to go through this a little bit just to see what they say here. Because this is an interesting report. Let me blow this up a little bit. Let's see who some of these people were. Okay. Further detail analysis, telemetry records. Okay. St. Louis University. I'm going to see what they say here. This is a contract. Wait, 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 what, what? I don't understand this. What's the key words? Naturally and Argus injected geomagnetically trapped radiation. What the hell are they doing, dude? Wow, I've never heard of that before. What the hell were they doing? Unless they were intentionally trying to charge it up with radiation. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what we said in the first video, that they were intentionally... Yeah detonating shit up in the atmosphere to do something for a reason yeah 
What's this Argus shell though? That's I don't know what Argus is. This is interesting. Yeah, Nico's going crazy right now. Geomagnetic flux density vectors. Okay. Mirror point value. Oh, what did they say? Polar radius of international. Now you see this here, right? Yeah. You know, I had started off with everyone else saying, you know, the Earth's flat, the Earth's flat, you know, and then I realized I had to start doing a little bit more research that my final, my ultimate agreement on the model of the Earth, the shape and design and construct of the Earth, was that if you're going to say you believe the Earth is flat, you better be specific on, on what part of the earth you were talking about was fucking flat because yep. you're talking to somebody who for the first time that believes everything all the photos nasa's put out there you're on a spinning ball and they say oh well the earth is flat well you're stupid shut up if you tell a person who believes in the globe the earth is an equipotential ellipsoid undergoing flattening with a flat plane fixed surface in the middle then that's something that's more palatable well, uh, then I'd say, then I'd probably say that you're on a mix of shrooms and your grandpa's cough medicine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's that's more palatable to say to someone yeah. than to say, "Hey, the Earth is fucking flat." It, yeah. I, we were Robert and I already showed on that NASA software that when you get down to ground level, everything is fucking stationary, and the constellations above us are moving you know, in, in specific directions at different speeds, at different layers. You got the sun and moon moving, you know, at its at its uh, uh, speeds. You got the stars moving at their speeds. So, you know, you got this complexity of things going on above us, and we don't know where, where everything may be. All we know is that when you put up a high altitude balloon and a camera somehow catches a glimpse of what the, what the, what the sky looks like, you don't see any fucking stars. So either the stars are below that altitude or they're just further out or the camera just can't pick up that type of ambient light, you know, to and open up the aperture to, to capture what's out there. We all know that every time, you know, they send anything up there and when astronauts claim to be doing a spacewalk, you don't see shit but what they claim to be the sun and nothing else. You don't see any stars at all. But they can show you a time lapse of the shitload of stars in the background, though. Yeah, they just beat that bad boy up. Same thing people do with their their cameras. Speed of light and free space. What? Are you kidding me? Speed of light and free space? Ain't light, no light traveling in free space. Right, John? Light don't travel in free space. Let's see here. I keep going through this. Motion of inertia, or dipole, rest mass of electron. Well, this is a good document. I'm going to actually save this for myself, too. Hey, somebody said in chat, Marcus said in chat that Opera Operation Argus was a series of uh, nuclear weapons tests in 1958 upper atmosphere. Oh, there you go. So they're trapping radiation in the atmosphere, man, intentionally. There was none. So you gotta ask yourself, before 19, the 1940s, there was no fucking radiation in the atmosphere. So they created this radioactive environment they claim was in space. Well, could that have been look what's affected the ozone layer? What they said it is. And it absolutely could have been because yeah. you, they said that there was no radioactivity decay. Remember what we had read? There was yeah. no radioactivity decay before 1896. There was no chemical or physical process that was creating radioactive decay. They started doing these nuclear tests, trapping this shit up there in the atmosphere. And then everything starts to fucking fall apart. 
It sounds and like their, their mentality, their mentality then to do that type of, you know, crazy kind of wacko experiments, you know, and see what happens. They still up there. And they're yeah. claiming that the astronauts are traveling through this zone 95 minutes every fucking day. <laughs> every 95 minutes they're traveling through this. Every 95 minutes. This is, I ain't gonna go through a whole 125 pages, but I just wanna see what I might stumble across. Cause this is obviously really complex. Oh, here, here's what they say here. The results of the present analysis indicate a pronounced and unique omnidirectional penetrating radiation effect associated only with Argus event one. Two, include a comparison of directional flux density distributions, particles, uh, uh, centimeters minus two to the second minus one, okay, uh, naturally, inner Van Allen belt. Whoa, 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 whoa. This was 1958, right? Yeah. How the fuck they already talking about Van Allen belts in 1958? Before this guy even had a chance to do this test. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. How is that possible? An artificially Argus event one injected radiation and three permit determination of a decay curve for a limited time period of the measured maximum perpendicular to B directional particle flux density of the artificially injected. So here you go. Your Van Allen radiation belt, that shit ain't great. That shit is not natural. Break it down, John. What's natural? Say again? Could the Van Allen radiation belts be natural? Be a natural? Well, there is no space, so no. There you go. So that shit's all artificially created. They did this intentionally. Why would they create this highly charged radioactive zone when you knew 10 fucking years later you're going to be sending a bunch of dumbasses on a Saturn rocket to go to the moon? And they're claiming they don't even remember going through this. Why? Why would you do that? That's like me setting your house on fire and saying, John, you can go in the house now. It's safe. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, go that's what they did. Go completely against that theory of having to go through an area because it's like like them dropping a bomb and then saying, "Ah, oh, it's all right, you just exactly. go through that." Yeah. Drop a fucking bomb and says, "No, you can go in that area. Don't worry about it. You're not gonna have any, you're not gonna have any kids, but it's okay to go in that zone." Oh yeah, and by the way, you'll probably live probably two years after you you come out. These guys are living well into their fucking seventies and eighties, man. Yeah, but it doesn't affect them because they didn't tell them. Also, they had to have conscious double slit experiment fucking awareness that they were going through it to be affected by the radiation. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what they're trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell them they're going through it so that way they don't have to explain it. But 40 years from now, they're going to they're going to have they're going to have selective memory. <laughs> you know, I don't even remember going through all that radiation. Bob, do you remember? Well, shit. Uh, that radiation. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember seeing any stars. Do you remember seeing the stars? Well, <laughs> I don't remember seeing any. <laughs> oh, that, I tell you what, bro. When my son gets older, I want to play that video for him, dude. That's fucking comical. <laughs> oh, man. The Van Allen belts are man made. Anybody wants to disprove. That they're not, please do. Let me know when you put up the video to prove it. Look at this shit, man. I know I'm going to stumble across something that's going to be crazy. Let me see here. Results. John and I, we love results, don't we, John? All the data acquired from the unshielded GM counter, that's the Geiger counter, and a directional scintillator, detector A, channel 2, for passes 414 and 427 are summarized in figures A2. Triangle points for each of the two figures are count rate maxima. 
determined by the directional distributions. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see here. They just talked about all this. And they're saying they sent up a three foot rocket, man. And they got all this data. They got all this data in the 19, late 1950s, people. These guys are smarter than the guys that live today. <laughs> we got more advanced technology today. They had fucking backyard fucking tools to create a three foot rocket on a balloon. And they got better data than we did to this very day. Oh, they were good in them days. They were good. Yeah, they were real good in those days. So that means we just, we just became more ignorant as time progressed. Wait, wait, wait. What's this? Shit? August 1958, 24 and 48 hours following the event. Short-lived penetration radiation phenomena, possibly related to geomagnetically trapped debris. Debris. That radiation, they're pretty far up there. Debris. This section contains a revised relative to our final report. Let me see here. The methods of treating each limit. Okay. This, I'm not going to say it's boring, but no. there's, there's literally some, some blood-soaked meat in here, and I think I'm looking for it. Yeah, this is definitely a document. Conclusions. Detail analysis of the Argus directional flux density distribution from explore flow data. 1.82 hours respectively after event one comparison with natural flux densities. Oh, dude, come on, man. Yeah, this is this is a this is a long document, man. What the hell is this? This is um past four two seven. Take it. Just take it. Yeah, this is all the scatter chart analysis. Let me see what else we got going here. Yeah, this is all scattered. This is this is this is really in depth, people. Wow, there's a lot in well, there. Well, what they did was I, I'm gonna tell you what they did. They did a post upper atmospheric detonation test, is what they did. They wanted to measure how much of that ship was actually in the air. That's what they did. They wanted to know how much of it was left in the air. And here, look at this here. You're talking about natural radiation. This is the Earth radii, and then you got the slope and the pass number. Dude, there was no discovery of Van Allen belts, man. This is not something that was naturally up there. They created this, man. And he, had, he was allowed to put his experiments up there through Explorer 3 and 4 to start measuring this. And he came up with the research. He basically put together the research study to say, let me do this and I'll give you my results. And he found exactly what he was looking for. He put this up. It was all, it was nothing but a fucking Van Allen experiment from the 1940, the late 1940s, all the way through 63. It was all Van Allen. It was basically for his fucking papers, his research. The Geiger counter is bullshit, bro. Yep. The invention of the Geiger counter by Van Allen is bullshit. Because this type of radiation don't exist on the earth. And it seems that you need some sort of chemical and physical process, which includes radon, which gives you the heat from from a from a explosion. I mean, any I mean, even with a firecracker, fucking TNT, C4, you're gonna feel the heat from it. My question was, what the hell was happening before that? Did you just get a bang and there was nothing? True. I'm not sure. That's what it's looking like to me. I mean, look at the measurements for natural radiation, dude. They're they're just 
This is what the earth is supposed to be emitting. I think there are levels lower than this. But my question is, why create an artificially radioactive zone above our heads? Why? Why didn't you want people getting off the planet, man? Why didn't you want to give an opportunity? I mean, had it any had it had anything to do with prior civilizations always looking up in the sky and, and, and talking about shit coming out of the sky? Did they really not want something coming into the earth, into our atmosphere? And they created these hot zones to keep out whatever was trying to come in? Quite because in the process of doing that, they fucking now using the same shit to try to kill people. Because I've heard that theory before. I've heard yeah. that the reason why they did these upper atmospheric tests, people were saying, oh, they're trying to blow a hole in the dome, or they were trying to literally keep out some other beings that were trying to come here. And I can tell you here right now, I read a Brookings Institute report where they talked about they were they they were doing a study, a working group study on people who were actually reporting um, UFO sightings, and the the culmination of their research and conclusion revealed that there were a high concentration of reports over highly industrial industrialized cities where there was a high uh, uh, activity radioactive activity over the city. And when you look at the tests that were conducted in the U.S. in Nevada and other test sites in New Mexico, that's where a lot of these sightings actually occur. That's where a lot, of, and, and same thing happened, same thing for UK. Yeah, Rendlesham Forest. Same well, thing happened with UK because they was, they, there were a lot of people, what, what, it was, um, it was, it was the west side. It was the yeah. west coast of UK, right? Yeah. Well, it, sorry, the east coast. It was um, up in Norfolk near, it was called Rendlesham Forest. And they actually had like a nuclear facility there where they were still in, you know, ICBMs ready to launch from the UK. This is crazy, dude. And they had, they had an event happen, happen there where this object came down. So I, I concur with that same information that you had. And, you know, that was the reason, supposed reason of why they were doing that the upper atmosphere and then also possibly some of the some of the chemtrails to actually form um like a grid or a detection network around the plane to detect if anything moving in or out from that so that that was what i heard whether it's true or not that's another thing but yeah. you know we're reading things that are... this would be good data for people too just talk about the fact sheets teamwork produced by explorer four hey robert yes sir hey many years ago man i ran into you know, I don't know what subject I was on, but I was running into um, a study that was done. And I have it. I have the link somewhere in my files, man. Like I said, it was so many years ago. It took me a long time to find it. Um, that there's a certain percent of the population that are always getting abducted, you know, not just once, you know, many times, uh -huh. you know, with the alien abductions. Yeah. And there was a there was a guy two guys that went out and studied these people and they said that the only way that they could get them to stop was to do a certain was to say something guess what they said what they say jesus dude. christ oh man no kidding oh. man i'm telling you dude and they stopped i'm just saying that's what i found out last show i'm gonna do dude you're gonna try to pull me back into another conversation on this bro I'm just saying. Are you dead serious? I'm dead serious. So they were telling the aliens that Jesus Christ, man, they just run away. No, they would just say the name and that the abductions <laughs> would stop. Oh, shit. I ain't going to go there with you right now on this, man. Come on, bro. I'm going to, since you brought that up, I'm going to try to find that. That's way down in my files. Like yeah, I said, yeah. that had to be about yeah, eight. Too. Eight, ten years ago. So this is, I think this is the, uh, this is the Explorer One photograph. This is Explorer One. This is what it looked like. 
How fucking tall was this thing? Didn't look that tall, huh? Hmm. This was Explorer 1. And think about how big the rockets are today. Why the fuck can't we do it like this anymore? See, I would believe something this small could go as far as they claim shit is going today. But when you talk about shit that's taller than the fucking building I live in, <laughs> launching, the fucking 100,000 miles of shit, 200,000 miles, I'm calling bullshit. I mean, look how primitive this looks. I think that me, John, and Robert, and Martin, and Aaron, we could build this shit. And then the neighbors would look at it and be like, those guys are terrorists. They're building a bomb. This is interesting. This is where Explorer 1 was going. It wasn't even going up high with the normal elliptical orbits. It was going down close to Antarctica. Interesting. Okay, let's get to man-made sources of radiation. Here we go. Man-made sources. We don't want to freak anybody out on this. But if you have granite countertops or feistaware, fiestaware, one of the more commonly found if relatively weak and low impact sources of artificially generated radiation exposure is simply from the use of naturally occurring elements in man-made items. Granite contains trace amounts of uranium and some samples can end up with a high enough concentration of uranium to be measurable with detection equipment. Nico's joining us for the last show. Other places that radioactive material may be found in a household setting, yes, baby, are in some varieties of vintage fiesta ware or red glazed pottery from the 40s and 60s that used uranium in order to achieve the bright colors in the glaze. Modern products use artificial dyes to achieve the same colors, of, of course. So I guess they didn't want nobody to find out that uh, that red pottery clay had uranium in it, and somebody reverse engineer that shit and make, make themselves a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> now they're starting to use dyes and shit. <laughs> oh, boy, nuclear power. Nuclear power is perhaps the first thing that springs to mind. Uh, Robert, you know, this reminds me. You got that document? Can you pull up that document regarding fusion physics? Fusion huh? physics. Yeah, two seconds. I'll yeah. Bring it up in a second. Can you pull that one up? Okay. Let's have a look. Yeah. yeah, pull that up because I want to talk about that next. Um, it says here when you ask someone about man made sources of radiation, using fission reactions. And uranium to turn water into steam to power giant turbine generators. Nuclear pow power plants generate tremendous amounts of electricity. Much of Europe gets electricity from nuclear power plants, as do many sections of the U.S. Yeah. What's that guy's name? Galen Windsor, who used to swim in the nuclear uh, cooling pools at General Electric. Really? I didn't know that. Galen Windsor. Let me see if I can pull up that video, man. Let me see if I can pull up that video on Galen Windsor. This dude said he used to swim. Galen, it was a Galen Windsor. Oh, somebody, I already saw something says debunked on that shit. The great nuclear hoax. I don't want to get a copyright strike, dude. Everyone gets the idea with Galen Windsor. Let me see if I can find something open source on him where it doesn't give me a strike. Galen. Okay. Get a scare scam. I don't want to be biased in this shit, man. 
I want to provide something that's neutral. Yeah, the shame of it is, is that this dude actually died of leukemia, didn't he? I think he did. Nuclear power plants are tightly regulated and with tight limits on both radiation exposed to workers in public. The annual dose, average dose to a member of the public from nuclear power plants is roughly equal to the amount generated internally by the decay of radioactive materials naturally found in the body. In fact, due to the presence of radioactive uranium and thorium in the fly ash from coal burning, how about that? Coal burning power plants give off more radiation into the environment typically than a nuclear power plant. Ain't that some shit? Wow, I didn't know that. That's interesting. But could that be true? Because you can you can you can make you can get coal right out of the ground, but say you burned up wood and you get the wood chips, you know, the wood chip stuff like you burn that off. You're giving off more radiation than a nuclear power plant? It means that well, uh, uh, the only thing I can assume by that statement is that it, the nuclear power plant can't be giving off much radiation then because I've got if you've got a sack of coal, I can't see it being that radioactive or digging it up out of the ground. Yeah, that, that, I don't know. Unless it's from a radioactive source that's in the ground naturally. With, mixed in with it, I don't know. You're saying let's let's see what it means to be radioactive. An atom is said to be radioactive. If it is un see, this is what I said yesterday, right? An atom is said to be radioactive if it is unstable due to the excess of either energy or mass. I said this yesterday for anybody, not yesterday, but the day before. When we did part one, that's what that's what it means to have radiation, we have something to be radioactive. It's just giving off excess en energy, all right, or more mass. It either stays the same size or it absorbs it because it's or it's unstable and it needs to become stable. We've got we've got equilibrium going on around us every nanosecond. Everything is working on balancing itself out. And whenever you feel a shitload of heat or a lot of cold or whatever it may be, there's a reason why you feel a lot of heat or you feel a lot of cold or things just don't stay in balance because you know it's not vibrating at, at the same frequency, so to speak, right? Uh, let's see here. Um, and there's therefore likely to decay at some point and give off radiation. A substance or material is said to be radioactive if it is made up of, made up of or contains a large quantity of radioactive material. These radioactive materials such as bananas, the uranium glaze and vintage, fiesta wear, or norm generated is the process of natural gas exploration given give off radiation over time as the radioactive atoms in them decay. This is uranium ore, a naturally radioactive substance. Uranium, this just looks fucked up. If I ever saw this, I mean think about this. If you ever saw this, would you pick it up? Nah, it looks dangerous, doesn't it? Look, it just looks fucking nasty. It looks like this rock shit on itself. <laughs> That's what it looked like. I mean, if I saw this on the ground, I wouldn't pick it up. But who's to say that this is uranium ore? Hey, that's what Vivin was holding the other day. No, no, no. Well, Vivin said, yeah, it had a smell to it, but his was darker. It didn't have this yellow tinge to it. Over time, as the number of unstable atoms decreases, the material becomes less radioactive. This time it is measured by the half-life of the different radioactive elements. This is the amount of time it takes for half of the atoms in a given sample to decay and give off radiation. Here we go, John. Remember that, that statement again? For example, carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. <laughs> so after that amount of time, a quantity of 100 atoms of C14 would have turned into 50 C14 atoms and 50 nitrogen-14 atoms. Uranium-11, a radioactive isotope used in medicine as a tracer, has a half-life of 2.8 hours, whereas another isotope of uranium at the other end of the scale, uranium-115, has a half-life of 441 trillion years. Now, let me ask you this. How do you think they measured this, John? 
with that imagination. Imagine, how do you think they came up with this number? Imagination. Exactly. It's like the Van Allen. People, people, you can't believe when you see these numbers. I mean, I worked in the financial global intelligence business, and every time a client told me, you know, give me like this astronomical number they were talking about financially, we were working on this big deal. I immediately called bullshit and said, you know what, don't call me again. You, I'm not listening to your scams. Hey, hey, that that trillion number, there hasn't been one trillion seconds that elapsed since Christ was crucified. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. Shit. Iridium 115 has a half life of 441 trillion years, man. That's what this and I guarantee you, if anybody went out there and asked someone at a university, can you tell me how this number came about? They will not be able to tell you. I don't know a single physicist on this earth who could answer how they came up with this number. Because they don't even know. It is commonly held that a sample of radioactive material will be completely decayed after seven half-lives, though after the time there will be still about 0.78% left, which, which with a large enough starting sample would still be significant. For smaller amounts like those, say, typically using medicine, though, it's a good rule of thumb. What is contamination? We already know what that is. Does being exposed to radiation make me radioactive? Yeah, here we go. Exposure to radiation does not immediately make a person radioactive. The only type of radiation that is capable of directing, directly causing other material to become radioactive is neutron radiation, which is generally only found inside nuclear reactors or in a nuclear detonation. Anyone in those conditions is put plainly going to have bigger problems. No shit. However, the ingestion of radioactive material does have the potential of making a person radioactive, at least on a temporary basis. This is the principle behind the medical use of many radioactive materials as it aids in imaging, diagnosis, and other areas. Between the short half-lives of the elements involved in the body's natural means of disposing of many radioactive elements, a person's individual radioactivity is usually short-lived. However, certain types of contamination, depending on isotopes involved in the availability of treatment, can be poor can become more permanently deposited in a person's organs or bones. Now, let's go back to space. They're exposed, they're supposed to be supposed to be exposed to gamma radiation, right? Gamma, gamma and neutron radiation, right? Right? The whole spectrum. The whole fucking spectrum. They're exposed to the whole goddamn spectrum of radiation at 240 fucking miles above the surface of the earth. They were supposedly been exposed to even fucking a thousand times more than that going from the fucking earth to the moon that they claim is 258,000 miles. That didn't happen. We all know that didn't happen. Well, let's just take the ISS, for example. You had all these people go up there and they're supposed to be exposed to the entire fucking spectrum of radiation that we supposedly know. And then you have this Dr. Budwar from NASA state, and what I read in part one, that no astronaut has ever been diagnosed with space radiation sickness. Now, what did they say here? What did they say here? They say in this article, Anyone in those conditions is put plainly going to have bigger problems if you're exposed to neutron fucking radiation from nuclear reactors and nuclear detonation. Don't they have, like, isn't there some sort of, um, they do have some sort of just uh, minor nuclear powered devices up there on the ISS, right? Supposedly. I would have, I would have thought so. Yeah, because you've got to have some kind of long life stuff. You can't just be bringing batteries up. And <laughs> no, and solar's not going to cut it. Yeah, really, yeah, hey, can you pack the fucking SpaceX Dragon with, with uh, your supplier fucking Duracell, please? 
Yeah, and they're oh, not going to have a charging facility up there. So just ask now. You keep searching this information, you're going to find contradiction after contradiction after contradiction after contradiction. Maybe they say, How does the radiation affect me? Probably the most important question a person has about radiation is what exposure to, to it will do to them. And it, it is an invisible, odorless energy that has a lot of mystery, mystery about it. So fears and speculation tend to be pretty common. So is the fucking boogeyman. Okay? People, people hear about the boogeyman all the time. It's invi in, invisible, odorless. You know, it's a mystery. But does he exist? In the wake of events such, such as Fukushima, additionally, media coverage tends to present a lot of factual information, but without some of the context that would help make it clear to the viewer. All right, what was this guy doing? The early experiment on x-rays in 1896 before the effects and consequences of radiation exposure were understood. Look what these guys are doing. They're just fucking lighting themselves up. No protection, no nothing. He's just sitting there in the fucking chair. Go ahead, John, zap me. <laughs> zap me. Give me what you got. <laughs> Oh, dude. How is radiation exposure measured? Radiation exposure is measured primarily in REMS in the U.S. and, and SIVIT, SIU, and is measured on the radioactive dose absorbed relatively to its possible health effects on the body. This is called the equivalent dose, which is you got a banana's dose worth, right? The banana's dose worth of radiation. And it is weighted to account for the fact that the same amount of time in an alpha radiation field, for example, which have different long-term effects at the same time in a gamma field of equal strength. The bullshit Gaga counter right here. Okay. Um, REM is broken down further into millirem and microrem, which are the levels that are going to usually be talked about. Acute versus chronic exposure. A big factor in determining the effects of radiation exposure is whether it is acute or chronic. Act Acute exposure to dose of radiation is received all at once. Robert. Yep. Yeah, I got to go, man. I'll, I'll try to be back in about 10, 15 minutes. All right, you got it, brother. All right. See you soon. Examples include doses involved in cancer therapy. That's acute exposure. The immediate concern with acute exposure would be acute radiation syndrome, which would occur at about 150 to 300 rem whole body exposure. Okay. As a reference point, a chest CT scan, which is one of the highest doses common sources of exposure, delivers about one rem of dose. A passenger on a flight across the continental U.S. would receive four rem. Ooh, shit. Four, no, no, that's four millirems. All right, right, okay. That's four millirems. Now, now here's what I want to compare, okay? Here's what I want to compare. I want to see, I'm going to search right now to find out, I'm going to put in the question. Radiation exposure of astronauts on the ISS to see if they tell me what the number is. Because a CT scan offers the highest dose of common source of exposure, right? So let's think about this, right? Yep. You'd have thought it would be at least that level of dosage or higher, wouldn't you, at a baseline to start let's with? See. Okay, NASA. Radiation channel. Do we want to go to their document or go? No, I'm gonna go to their document. Yeah, document first. We might have more. Go to their document. Space firing. The radiation challenge. Oh boy, they get ready to fuck up on this one. <laughs> I can just, I can just tell just by looking at the document. Let me put this in there for everybody as well, for the chat, so that they can uh, see this. Everybody can see that one as well. So here we go. Just taking a little bit to load up here. All right. Radiation. What does radiate where does radi what is radiation? What different kinds of radiation? Ionizing galactic cosmic. Are we protected from space radiation or what factors determine the amount of radiation astronauts receive? So the space weather effect of how is radiation measured? Okay, so we're gonna go like what's this pages five through six or some shit like that? Oh, look at this. They're, they're claiming here that the Apollo 11, they got 0.18 rads. 21 oh. hours. They were protected in that paper thin module. That's bullshit. Module. <laughs> it's all bullshit data. It's all bullshit. Yeah. 
Hang on a second. Where does radiation? Where does radiation come from? Okay, it says here, there are three main factors. Let me blow this up a little bit. There are three main factors that determine the amount of radiation that astronauts see. They include altitude above the Earth. At higher altitudes, the Earth's magnetic field is weaker, so there is less protection against ionizing particles and spacecraft pass through the trapped radiation belts more often. <laughs> ah! Fuck, dude. <laughs> Show again. Come on, man. <laughs> you just fucking told us where the fuck the damn ISS is. <laughs> Did they not do that? Yeah. <laughs> dude, the trap radiation from Van Allen was where? 200 to 300 kilometers, right? Yeah. How many fucking miles is that, Robert? Can you do the conversion real quick? Do it. Dude, if the Van Allen radiation belts over the South Atlantic anomaly are anywhere between 200 to maybe 300 kilometers, right, off the coast of Brazil, convert that to, to miles, Robert. Doing it now. Because that's, that's got to be less than 150 miles, right? So 196 miles for 300 kilometers. And how high did they say the fucking ISS was? 240. <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on, man. Yeah. Sun cycle. The sun has an 11-year cycle, which culminates in a dramatic increase in the number of intensity of solar flares, especially during periods when there are numerous sunspots. Individual susceptibility. Researchers are still working to determine what makes one person more susceptible to effects of space radiation than another. This is an area of active investigation. Man, they don't even fucking know. That's what they're saying. They yeah. still don't know. So what makes anyone believe that they're fucking people up there? They're still investigating. They don't know. They don't know. How, how, can you, how can you take someone through tests here on Earth to determine, yeah, we can send this motherfucker up there? When they're still investigating. Exactly. Are you putting somebody in a fucking radi radiation fucking vacuum chamber to say, okay, if he comes out and he's okay, he's good to go. We're going to send him up. But if not, he's going to be fucking oatmeal when he comes out. <laughs> That's it. We'll scoop him out, you know. Yeah, we're going to scoop his ass out. <laughs> Come on, dude. It's ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> they reveal. They have. This is revealing exactly where anything could be. And it sure as hell, this tells you it ain't people. It's fucking robots. That's it. I mean, they've said that when they sent that thing up and it, you know, caused that Van Allen belt. That was the higher limit, upper limit of where oh, the thing. Come on, man! Does space weather affect astronauts? I gotta, re I gotta keep reading this. That's <laughs> all. They always give me. I've been using their fucking data since I've been doing videos, man. I, I have to thank them. I have to thank them. Does space weather affect astronauts? Absolutely. Space weather is closely related to solar activity, and this is important for astronauts traveling through space. Scientists have discovered that, that over an 11-year cycle, the number of sunspots increase and decrease is shown below. Interestingly, the sun is slightly brighter when there are many, sun, many sunspots. During one of these periods, the sun is more actively producing SPE and CMEs, coronal mass ejections, so that the amount of radiation in the solar system is slightly increased. The number of CMEs varies with the solar cycle, yada, 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 yada. Okay, so let's see something here. Dude, man, this is this is crazy. This is crazy, dude. How is the radiation measured? Okay, let's read this. Yeah, let's... There are several properties of radiation that must be considered when measuring or quantifying radiation. These include the magnitude of radioactivity of the source, the energy of the radiation itself, the amount of radiation in the environment and the amount of radiation energy that is absorbed. Collectively, these properties determine the nature of radiation itself. It is very important to understand that equal doses of different kinds of radiation are not equally as damaging. 
To account for the differences, radiation doses expressed as dose equivalent. The following chart summarizes these parameters. Okay, so radioactivity, rate of radiation emission transformation from a radioactive substance, absorbed doses, energy imparted by radiation per unit, expression of dose. Okay, this is it. This shit. Thank you. They're quite selective on what radiation they think's up there, aren't they? Then, in that respect, they're saying, "Oh, it's you know, it's." Look at this shit here. Hold on. While while lower energy electrons can pass through the spacing between DNA strands without interacting, some high energy heavy ions produce an ionization trail so intense that it can kill. <laughs> Produce an ion radiation just so intense that it can kill nearly every cell it traverses. See radiation damage in living organisms section for more detail. Well, I think you'd be in the shit then if it passed through your heart or your brain or your eye, wouldn't you? Well, here's the thing. They, they keep saying, what did they say before that, right? What did they say before that? This is an area we're still investigating. <laughs> yeah, the investigation. Well, dude, if you're still investigating, you don't fucking know. Why would you send people up there and take a chance that you may expose them to high energy, heavy ions produced by ionization trails so intense that it can kill every cell in your body? <laughs> you get a ma massive CME or, or the supposed, you know, flare from the sun and all the uh, other effects and high dosage of radi other radiation and everything else is up there combined with that. Dude, there's no way. No there way. People up there. There's no people up there. Are there radiation exposure limits? I didn't see yeah. the IS built of, you know, two foot of lead and concrete. Yeah. Do you know hey, what I mean? Man, come on. Do you honestly think that they launch shit up there with lead walls? Come well, on. We, 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 know, we know what blocks it, and that's that's concrete and lead. Concrete and lead. And they damn sure ain't got concrete and lead on the fucking ISS. That's what they make bases, you know, deep underground bases. Out. They don't make them out of, you know, aluminium. An insulation. The, the specific organ and career exposure limits are determined by a person's age and gender. I always, I, I was always wondering about that. Why? I think they relate I, to I that. Younger you are, you know, you can withstand higher doses, you know, and your gender, you know. I don't, I don't get I that. I can't see, it. I can't see how it being so that selective. You're saying that women, women can actually take higher doses of. Radiation. I, I know for children it affects them more because they're growing and they've got um, the bone marrow and stuff like that will will get affected by the radiation because it tends to absorb into the bones and that kind of structure. So when you're older, you're not you're not that susceptible to that. But it makes you wonder with with the information if they're still investigating it. That says it all. I mean, I'm still investigating it, but. You know, that means we're investigating it together. Then they've got no, they're basing it on nothing. Look, look, basing... dude, they tell on themselves right here. They tell on themselves. <laughs> they said the NASA limit for radiation exposure in low Earth orbit, low Earth orbit is 0.5 severe per year or 50 rem a year. 50 rem. 50, okay. C 50, 50 CT CT rem. scans. Dude, 50 wow. rem. No, there's no way they're No, going. dude, they, it says it right yeah, here. 50 yeah, I know. 50 rem. 50 rem for that, and there's no way they're going to expose it. They said the limit is 50 fucking rem. 50 chest scans. No way are they going to do that to a person and, and, and send a professional up there into that kind of, you know, they're not test pilots. They're, they're saying not, here that a CT scan is one, yeah. Is one fucking rem. That's the highest dose you can take. And then it mentions how you get affected from that because you do. We already read that out on the previous one when when I, when, when I read that the, the the section about the you know the dentistry and the fact that you know the dentist will hide behind X-rays. The CT scan is a lot more powerful than an X-ray. Now, now here's here's where the shit gets really nasty. <laughs> They're saying with acute versus chronic exposure, the immediate concern with acute exposure would be acute radiation syndrome which would occur at about 150 to 350 rem for whole body exposure, whole body. That means you got into a fucking MRI and they zapped the fuck out of you. All right, you're gonna end up with acute radiation syndrome. NASA says 
The limit is 50 a year. Fifty a year, dude. Whole body. Note that the values are lower for younger astronauts, since it is presumed that although they may live longer than older astronauts, exposure to larger amounts radiation or radiation early in the career in their careers could present greater health risks during old age. Dude, no. That's another piece of yeah, evidence. That is Armstrong. Yep. Buzz Aldrin, fucking Michael Cotton, those fuckers never went in fucking space, dude. They never went to the moon. Because look how look, look how long they lived. Look how long they lived. And look how far they're supposed to And they were really fuck, they were younger than the astronauts who are actually launching today, dude. Yep, they would have had all that long term exposure damage and this. Exactly. And how many think about how many missions these guys went on. Their hair would have fallen out all sorts. After exactly. That. Look how many missions these guys went on. They got more than 50 rem, dude, if they went, but they didn't. There's no way. They said that the younger you are, the lower the rates, but as you get older, you start having serious health risks. The career depth equivalent dose limit is based upon a maximum 3% lifetime excess risk of cancer mortality. The total equivalent dose yielding this risk depends on gender and age at the start of radiation exposure. Assume that a younger person can be exposed to less radiation because they have more life to live and therefore a longer chance to develop the subsequent health problems. The following chart compares the specific exposure limits between the general public and astronauts. Astronauts who spend three months in the ISS would be subjected to over three. <laughs> I fucking love this. Hold on, dude. I got to blow this shit up. I gotta blow this shit up, dude. Listen to this. Astronauts who spend three months. Hey, how long was um Tim Peak up there? He was up there for six months, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Astronauts who spend three months in the ISS will be subjected to over three times the maximum recommended dose of radiation for one year. So we know what one year is, so that's a hundred and fifty. Oh, 150. Dude, so he should dude, be dude. suffering from acute radiation dude. sickness. They said at the limit, the limit is fucking 50 rem a year. <laughs> this guy was only up there for three. How, he was up there for six months, right? Six months. I'm not entirely sure, but six you know. Yeah. Fucking 50, that's 300 fucking rem, dude. <laughs> he, hey, wait a minute. Didn't, dude, I gotta find that fucking shit again. Yeah. Hold on for a second, because <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking going crazy now. I'm going crazy now. <laughs> I'm going fucking crazy now, dude. This ain't no fucking joke. Where is that NASA shit that I read? Oh, damn, dude. I got to find that shit. Hold on. NASA. He, oh, um, no. Um, Phantom Torso. I want to read this shit again to everybody. I read it on the first one. So those who missed the first one, I'm going to show you what I said on the first one. This is what this stupid fucking doctor said from NASA. This jackass says high energy particles that pass through the human body can disrupt the way cells function. Although no astronaut has ever been diagnosed with space radiation. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. That's fucking yeah. NASA. That ain't Robert Bassano or Robert Shortman. Nope. That's fucking NASA. Science.nasa.gov forward slash bullshit motherfucking science. <laughs> that's what NASA says. I'm putting it in fucking chat for everybody to see that shit. That's lies upon lies then with that. They say we believe the current dose of radiation to the crew at ISS is too small to be a concern. Dr. Gutam Badwa. You better not have a fucking job in NASA anymore. They don't know. They're asked for the elbow, do they? Really don't. They he said it. no. Nobody's been diagnosed with <laughs> radiation sickness. Yeah. Well, that, but that, according that. to this NASA document, another NASA document, by the way, let me put this shit up in chat for everybody again. Okay? Again. According to this NASA document, astronauts who spend three months in the ISS will be subjected to over three times the maximum recommended dose of radiation for one year. 
The maximum dose of radiation for one year, people, is fucking 50 rem. This dude, three months exposes you to 300 rem. Six months exposes you what? To 3,000 rem, right? I think it's, it's going to be an yeah. accumulative thing, isn't it? No, no, 600 rem. Oh, yeah, oh, 600 yeah, rem. Yeah. So six months exposes you to fucking 600 rem, dude. That's it. You, you'd dude, be dude. falling out and everything, wouldn't you? Oh, my God. Tim Peake should be shitting his brains out as we speak right now. <laughs> yep. He should be shitting his pants, like, right now, dude. He's got a, you know... This is what NASA says. Astronauts would spend three months in the ISS would be subjected to over three times the maximum recommended dose of radiation for one year. And here goes the chart. Right? Depth of radiation penetration and exposure limits for astronauts and the general public. Okay, here you go. Astronauts, exposure, 30 days, a quarter, uh, 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 that's a quarter centimeter depth, blood forming organs, all right? Eyes, skin, annual. This is what astronauts are exposed to. Look at what the general public is exposed to here on Earth. And you're going to tell me. None of these motherfuckers ever got radiation fucking sickness? Space radiation sickness? <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Really? I got to keep reading. This is a good document, man. It is. This is a damn good document. Mission type. Space shuttle mission 41C. Radiation dose. This is all, these numbers are bullshit. These numbers are bullshit. I, well, maybe they might be right. Let me take that back. Because this was eight days. This was nine days. This is 87 days. This is six months. It's 10 peak. It's 10 peak. 10 peak should have been a fucking marshmallow. He should be a marshmallow if he was up there. Yeah. If he was up there. If he was up there. It says here, crew aboard the space station receive an average of 80 millisieverts for a six-month stay at solar maximum. The time period with the maximum number of sunspots and maximum solar magnetic field to deflect the particles in an average of 160 millisieverts for a six-month stay. Come on. What, 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 make up your fucking mind. Man. It. One minute they're using rem, the next minute they're using sieverts. Didn't they just fucking say this is what they're fucking being exposed to? Yeah. They're putting that into confuse you again. That's why they've gone. Times the maximum recommended dose of radiation for one year. The maximum recommended fucking dose is 50 rem. Where the fuck are they coming with this milli? Where are they coming with this shit for, man? What, what, why are you why are you bringing down the numbers? Make it to make it look less dangerous than it is. So when they say, "Oh, you," yeah, then they 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 they're like, "Oh shit, we fucked up." So we gotta see this instead. Although the type of radiation is different, one millisievert of space radiation is approximately equivalent to receiving three chest X-rays. On Earth, we receive an average of two millisieverts every year from background radiation alone. What the fuck? Come on, man, dude. Wait, wait. Make up your fucking mind. First, you said that the general public. Gets this on Earth. Penetration and exposure limits. Yeah. Then this is the public. We sitting on the motherfucking flat Earth. This is what the astronauts get. And then they come back. They come back to say, oh, wait a minute. The astronauts are receiving less than we are. On Earth, we get two millisieverts. These fuckers get one. Yeah. <laughs> come on, dude. What the fuck, man? They're trying to baffle people, and the reason they can do that is because you. Because because you. I, am I reading? Let me look at the it. chat, man. Am I reading this shit wrong? People in the chat, <laughs> am I reading this shit wrong? Please, somebody tell me. Am I reading this shit wrong? Because if I am, I'll put the damn document up there again, and everybody else can read that shit again. I ain't gonna do a correction video. I'll just say, hey, I'm fucking sorry. But am I reading this shit wrong? Because that's I'm looking exactly in the chat what now. No. Yeah, they, it, every, you, you says yeah, everyone's on track so far, yeah. Damn, dude. How does the radiation environment on Earth compare to the radiation environment on the moon or Mars? Okay, here's what they're saying. NASA has collected a variety of radiation environmental data from the moon and Mars. 
During the lunar prospect mission, NASA scientists discovered that there are some areas of the moon that have a weak magnetic field. Magnetic fields have the ability to deflect small amounts of radiation. Locations within these fields are slightly more protected and might be candidate site for bases on the moon. Oh, man. This made me fucking sick, bro. I got radiation sickness right now. Just <laughs> I have radiation sickness from my computer right now. Man. Yeah. This is sick, dude. Oh, here we go. They talk about the South Atlantic anomaly. Oh, I was waiting for that. All right. Radiation. Here we go. Let me start right here. No, no, no let's start here. Right in order to minimize radiation exposure, people, people living on the moon or Mars will need to limit the time they spend outside in their spacesuits and distance they travel from their prospective habitats. The total amount of radiation that astronauts will receive greatly depends on solar activity, their location within respect to, respect, to, respect to planetary magnetic fields and the amount of type of radiation shielding using habitats and spacecraft. Radiation exposure for astronauts aboard the ISS and Earth orbit is typically equivalent to an annual rate of 20 to 50 rems. And is that the same as what they're putting? Okay, up? no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that conflicts with what they talk about the 50 rem. They said that the limit yep. Yep. is 50 rem. They're getting exposed to just under that, so they're fucking cutting. They're literally cutting it fucking close. Okay, because they're getting 20 to 40. But, but you see how they break it down, right? They did this shit to us, Robert, with that picosecond thing. Remember? Yep. We found out that a fucking picosecond is equal to fucking what? 2.5 seconds. <laughs> 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 dude, all they're doing is just flipping the math around, dude. They're, yep. they're flipping around the... the, the that was conversion. a math game on that. That's all they're doing. The average dose of equivalent rate absorbed, observed on a previous space shuttle mission was 3.9 uh, civets an hour, with the highest rate of 96 civets per hour, which appeared to have occurred while the shuttle was in the South Atlantic anomaly region of Earth's magnetic field. So wait a minute. They actually get, oh fuck, dude. That's like, that's 30 fucking times more radiation during, wow. when they go through the South Atlantic anomaly. So every time the ISS travels through the South Atlantic, I don't know how long it takes to get through there. But let's just say, they're being exposed to 30 times more fucking radiation every fucking 95 minutes. That Every 95 minutes, they get 30 wow. times more fucking higher dose of radiation. <laughs> which, means, which means that this fucking number right here is bullshit. Yeah, of course it does. Because they're going to get a lot more than that, aren't they? Over a period of... of because of if they're pain. getting 30 times more that amount of radiation per hour, that means that this is bullshit. That means that what they said on that previous section about how much radiation an astronaut gets because that, that especially when especially when the supposed positioning of where the iss moves over it, it yeah. does it does close passes so it would pass over the, the south atlantic anomaly and then do the next pass near it and the next pass you know will kind of cut almost off it you know so they're, they're not just passing it once within yeah. that period yeah yeah and this is crazy because here's what they're saying i go back to what they said before Astronauts who spend three months on ISS would be subjected to three times the maximum recommended dose in one year. Meaning that if you're up there for three months, you're getting fucking three times the recommended dose that you were supposed to be exposed to in one year, which is 50 rem a year. You can't, you can't withstand more than 50 rem a year, but you're getting three times the fucking dose in three months. Three times the dose in three months. Not including it goes, the up to, yep, it, it goes up wow. higher than that if you believe the Van Allen radiation belts. Because <laughs> according to the South Atlantic anomaly, you're getting 30 times that much when you go through that area. That's what they say here. They say it right here. They saying it. NASA said it. They're saying for a six month journey to Mars, an astronaut would be exposed to roughly 300 millisieverts or a total of 600 millisieverts for round trip. If we assume that the crew could spend 18 months on the surface while they wait for the planet to realign to make the journey back to Earth possible, they will be exposed to an additional 400 millisieverts for a grand total of about 1,000 millisieverts. Note that an asteroid repeating the same journey on multiple occasions could receive less or more radiation each. What the fuck? Oh, man. Dude, come on. But 
make up your mind. They're either going to receive less or more. <laughs> they can't live. Because you said, they said that if you go to Mars, right, people living on Mars would have to limit the time that they spend outside. So how the fuck you going to wait there for 18 fucking months for the planets to line up? But you're, going, you're not sure if they're going to get less or more radiation. They're fucking waiting, dude. That's it, and they're still investigating, so they don't know. So everything they put down here is, is investigation. It's not conclusion. They're still fucking or... waiting. <laughs> Free test activity, ionizing and non-ionizing or both. This is a fucking test, dude. Look at this shit. <laughs> I think we're past. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait a minute. Did they, is this like a test you got to take or some shit? Your test to classify items 1 through 16 as using or producing ionizing or identifying this type of radiation. Well, this produces ionizing, right? Ionizing, 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 non-ionizing, ionizing, ionizing. Ion All this shit is ionizing. <laughs> yeah. All of it. Here's the answers. What the fuck? Look at they saying here. Cell phone non-ionizing. Laptop computer. Non-ionizing. Chest x-ray. Well, we, we, know, we know the cell phone thing's lying to start with. Yeah, yeah, the cell phone's bullshit. People can have all kinds of headaches and vision problems and shit like that. Right, yeah. That's no, but they, they'll they yeah. blame that on electromagnetic wave propagation, man. High frequency yeah. is fucking it up. So that's, I, I will agree on, on that one with regards okay. to cell phone. Chest x-ray and abdomen CT. Ionized remote control, all that shit is. Wait, you're telling me a skull MRI is non ionizing? Ah, uh, maybe so, because an MRI is magnetic resonant imaging. You, you have an electromagnetic field around your fucking head, so it's just magnetism. Television, the sun, both. Oh, the television gives the same as the fucking sun. How about that shit? Microwave, non ion. I don't know. You guys agree with microwave does non-ionizing? Well, a microwave? Uh, nah, it's getting onto that verge of, you know, almost. How many people out there in chat agree that a microwave produces non-ionizing radiation? Thumbs up if you agree. Shit, they went to sleep. <laughs> okay. Um, dental x-ray machine, ionizing, earth, both, ultrasound of a baby, non-ionizing, atomic bomb, both. Okay. Machine radiation doses, this is interesting, doctor. Yeah, I think, I, I think they've selected it, you know, some of it would be it's accurate. It's a good document, though. It's a good document, but we call them lying in a bunch of shit, though. Yeah. Yeah, we call them lying, definitely. Uh, definitely call them lying. Okay, let me keep reading this, though. I read the chronic stuff. Okay. So here's what they say. Chronic exposure, on the other hand, is low levels of exposure over a long period of time. Examples could, could be exposure from high levels of radon in a basement or someone living at high altitudes. Residents of the Andes Mountains, for example, receive around 200 millirems from cosmic radiation annually, but about six times more than the average. Chronic radiation exposure at low levels presents a much reduced health risk as it is of low quantities over long periods of time, allowing the body to repair any damage made to the cells. The main health concern with chronic exposure is an increased risk of cancer as seen by increase in thyroid cancers found in Belarus since the Chernobyl disaster with between 4,000 and 6,000 cases being directly attributable to the increased radiation exposure with 15 deaths reported. Wait a minute. You got, you got high doses of this chronic, right? But only 15 fucking deaths reported? 15? Yeah, that's, 15 that, fucking people. I think that's a bit conservative, that number. Yeah. There, there was probably more workers bloody died that were at the plant. Yeah, that. yeah, there was, you know, yeah, there was a lot of people at that. You know, sacrifice people that were sent in that know they would only have a day or, or a week to live after that high level contamination. Oh, this gets good, dude. This gets good now. Health <laughs> effects of exposure. Look at, look at paragraph two, dude. <laughs> Smoking gun, wow. right? Oh, oh God, yeah. Look at that. Right here. Right here, dude. For acute exposures, the first physical effects can be seen at around 20 to 50 rem. 25 to 50 rem. Acute. Okay? The physical, the physical effects of you being exposed to acute radiation syndrome. 
occurs at 25 to 50. Now remember, NASA says no astronaut has ever been diagnosed with radiation, space radiation sickness. Excessive exposure could lead to health problems. <laughs> all right? That's what NASA says. That's it. Right here. Surely they'd know the health of all their astronauts. <laughs> <laughs> right here, they say, for acute exposure, the first effects can be seen around 25 to 50 rem and manifest as a drop in a person's white blood cells. Acute radiation syndrome occurs at 150 to 350 rem, presenting nausea, yeah. fatigue, hair loss, and skin reddening. Oh shit, wait a minute, wait a minute. They may be right on that. Because every time I saw Tim Peake and, and Scott Kelly, them motherfuckers were red all the time, dude. <laughs> right? Think about it. Let's go look back to the videos, dude. For NASA. That's all you gotta do. Those fuckers were red all the time, dude. Scott Kelly, he is bald fucking bald head. Look at the next line down though, that's even more telling. L D thirty by fifty, which is the point where fifty percent of the people exposed will die within thirty <laughs> days. So you're telling me they're up there for three you know, six months or so you know, half without a year. medical care, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll die within thirty without medical care. Is is between 40, 460 to 600 rem. Tim Peake and fucking Scott Kelly and that Russian guy were exposed to this fucking dose right here. If they were up there. If they were at the fucking ISS where they claim it is right now, which is not. If these guys were up there, they didn't have no fucking medical care. From the data that's in front of us, yeah, that's exactly what it says. That means that when they came down within thirty days, they're fucking dead. Or, or, or I even, mean, if, even if they I try mean, and recover, I give they're... ninety days. I give ninety days, dude. <laughs> ninety days, they're dead. At a thousand rem, a hundred percent of those exposed will die within sixty days. Oh, you're out of luck then if you have a solar flare and oh, you're yeah, up there, yeah, you out of luck. Forget it. You get close to a thousand rem, fucking kiss your ass goodbye. You're done. <laughs> All right, here's what they say here. These are all very high levels compared to typical exposure. Eating a banana, for example, is only 0 0.01 millirem of exposure. The average person receives about 30 millirems of dose from the decay of potassium 40 in their own bodies every year. Okay, the maximal, now, now here's, here's how nutrition plays a really fucking important part of what we're talking about, okay? Because if you like eating a fucking shitload of bananas, you better fucking stop. You better stop. You better stop eating a shitload of fucking bananas. Period. You balance, balance them out, so, uh, you know. And you better find some sort of anti antioxidant that can stop this shit, that can slow this shit down. The decay of potassium forty in your own body you better start figuring out what actually equalizes and slows down the metabolic rate of the decay of potassium 40 in your own body every year think about that shit because down here in colombia we eat papaya guajaba mango we have bananas we have all this natural fruit here now, just ain't no spray and shit and toxic shit being sprayed on our stuff down here. They ain't fucking injecting animals, all kinds of fucking drugs, sticking fucking cow prods up their fucking ass and shit, trying to excite them. They ain't doing that shit down here. If you live in a place where they're doing that shit, you know, I know it's expensive, man, to stay healthy, but this ain't fucking rocket science. The maximum external dose received by members of the public after the three mile line accident was about 100 rem, or 25% of the typical annual background radiation. That shit was in New York, too. I wasn't there when that shit happened. Radiation in food and water. A source of concern for many people is the prospect of radioactive contamination of their food and water. No shit. This can occur from radioactive contaminants being ingested by animals that are then used for food, such as strontium 90, found in cow's milk after Chernobyl, or taken upon the plants through their roots. This is how Brazil's nuts became radioactive due to their root system taking up radon from the soil. Holy shit, wow. dude. 
The fucking trees, man. The trees, dude. We're literally pulling fucking radon up from the fucking ground. Wow. Into the nuts itself. Dude, don't drink, no fucking, don't drink no fucking Brazilian milk, dude. <laughs> Shit, I'm dead. They're fucking right on the border of us. On the west side, though. The east side. Damn. In situations where surface contamination of food is, con is a concern, detection with handheld survey equipment can be useful. However, in such cases, contaminated meat or seafood or contamination of water or other liquids such as milk, it is generally requires the examination of samples using laboratory equipment. Yeah, how many people got fucking lab equipment in their house to test their fucking milk? That's why they say the baby should just be breastfeeding, man. They be taking that artificial shit. Other ways radiation is used. Smoke detectors, medicine, radiography. Huh. Food safety. They radiated food, yeah. But it does damage the food and it eliminates yeah, a lot really, of vitamins. And really. I mean, do you see this shit on your food when you buy it, dude? I've not seen that symbol, no. Yeah, we. I don't see this shit on, on our food down here. Does anybody see this shit on their food that they buy in the U.S. or anywhere else? I don't see this. Keep an eye out for it, but I haven't seen it before, now. Just a symbol right here. Yep. It means your food's been irradiated. The fuck? Why? Food irradiation is the process of using radioactive sources to sterilize foodstuffs. Why do you need to sterilize the food? The food, if it's natural, you don't need to sterilize nothing. The radiation works by killing bacteria and viruses or eliminating their ability to reproduce by ships, really damaging their DNA and RNA. Since neutron radiation is not used, the remaining food doesn't become radioactive itself, leaving it safe to eat. This method is also used to sterilize food packaging, medical devices, and manufacturing parts. Damn, man. Yeah, it's making me seriously worried. Government regulation. It's the last page, people. Given the risk, I don't even want to talk about government fucking nothing, dude. Man. Oh, there was something I wanted to show people. Hang on. There you go, right there. It's the U.S. radiation map. I want that shit. Hang on a second. Let me turn off a bunch of this shit. Let me get out of this. I already showed everybody that. Everyone already saw that. Okay. So here's the United States. This is the United States right here. Everyone can see that, right? God damn. So the yellow with the black on it, monitor, these are monitoring stations. Then there ain't a place you can go in the fucking United States where there ain't no fucking radiation, dude. It's fucking everywhere. It's everywhere, dude. It's located near not a lot of the actual nuclear sites itself on the map. Dude, this is this fucking everywhere. Where the hot zones are. Look, you got. Uh, let me see something here. Detail maps. The Pacific Northwest. Idaho National Laboratory. Malmstrom Air Force Base. Yeah, they've got a lot of the bases. Surprised they haven't got anything on in in Arizona. Yeah, let me see the world map. Hold on. This is the world map right here. That's interesting. This is Europe. Holy fuck. Shit, that's a load Dude, of... look at Europe, man. Load in the UK. Wow. Let me go to Monero Lab. That's what it says it is. Monero. Yeah, Monero Lab. Let me go to Monero Lab. Damn. 
And they don't actually show the chart. Let's go back to that. This is Europe, dude. Yeah, that's a quite, a, quite a lot. Huge that's, amount. Dense. that's fucking dense, dude. Huge amount in France and Belgium and UK, Netherlands, Netherlands Germany. Hey. This this Ireland, right? Where, sorry? Where are you pointing? What's this? Yeah, that's Ireland, yeah. There ain't shit in Ireland. That's where Norway's at. There ain't shit in Ireland, dude. Quite a few in Russia. None in hey, we know Russia will be covered. Ain't nothing in Ireland. Onslow, north of Onslow, Norway, either. No. Let's go to... Um, None in Turkey. Australia, really limited. Look at Australia. Everything's just down in this area. Ain't nothing out in the middle of the bush anywhere. Damn, man. It's a lot of fucking radiation, man. And I'm telling you what, most of this shit is fucking man made, dude. 90% of this shit's man made. The planet's fucking polluted, man. Polluted with polluted. the art artificial one, artificial radiation, not oh. natural. Yeah. Look at Colombia, dude. Nothing. 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 Venezuela, nothing. Brazil, you have out on the coast. None in Colombia. Nothing. Now, of course, this is monitoring, these are monitoring stations. Yep. So there's no monitoring stations in Colombia because there's no detectable fucking radiation to read. Not saying that there's no radiation, but these are all the monitoring stations. Well, let me see if I can. Uh... Let me see if I can see this. <coughs> Air monitors by state. Just for the United States. Look at this shit. This ESRI. Um, look at the chat real quick, Robert. Get some, yeah. get some people to call off some states in the United States they may be living in. Okay, I'll, I'll read them out as they come up. Yeah. Get some people to read off some states. Yeah. Arizona. Arizona? Okay, here we go. Arizona. That's Dust Dustin. Dustin is in Arizona? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Arizona. And then we've got a couple in Illinois. We've got Bran and... Where is he at in Arizona, just roughly? Uh, Dustin, where are you in Arizona? Yes. Seeing it like Tucson or Phoenix area? Or Yuma? He's not come back with it yet. Phoenix. Phoenix, okay. Phoenix. Oh, this fucking goes all the way in, dude. Oh, we don't know where this source is. Bet you nobody knew there was a fucking source. Oops. Wait a minute. They didn't want me to know where that was. <laughs> they didn't want me to know what the fuck that was. That's right, smack dab in the middle of the city, dude. Yeah, they still want that. Or two. Whether it's above or below ground, <laughs> they don't want any know. <laughs> Gamma gross count exposure rate. Here we go. Unless it's a monitoring station or. So this is from August, uh, June 30th to September 10th. You're at 0 0.01 mil millirems per hour. So much you've been exposed to. That's Phoenix. Gamma exposure. How about that shit? Gamma. Isn't that, that's the shit that astronauts are supposed to be exposed to out in space, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. How the hell are you creating gamma radiation down on the Earth? I'm not going to that's a stupid question to ask. We know how they're creating it. But this is, this is a gamma radiation exposure data. Gamma. Isn't gamma supposed to kill you? It's the top of, top of the chart. It's, it's the most right? dangerous. Gamma yeah. radiation is supposed to kill you, right? Yep, it's top of the chart. It's the most dangerous out of all the all the spectrum. Who wants to who wants to give off another state? Another state. Another state, right? 
kind of lucky dip when the next one comes up. So I'll, I'll shout it out. But I'll have a look. Texas. Texas? Okay. Yeah, Let's David in Texas. Let's go to Texas. We're in Texas. Dallas, Houston, shit, they're all over the fucking place. Houston. Houston? Okay. Here we go. Houston. Houston. Let's go. And we've got Brown saying Area 51. Well, we can have a look there in a minute, I think. Okay, so Houston, gamma radiation. Oh, shit. Whoa, dude. Gamma gross count rate. Damn, they didn't want to. They don't even want to give the exposure rate. Wow. Arizona did. Air filter analysis. Let me see that. Damn. You guys got radio, nuclei, plutonium, uranium in the fucking air, dude. You 234, you 235, you 238. Oh, shit. I don't want to live in Houston, dude. Take your gas mask where you with you. You'd be Damn, right. that's just in Houston, dude. And they say that if you ingest this shit, you got all kinds of health problems, right? Shit, so from, people have from May 14th to September 10th, this is 1,000. Let's say what what is this? This is uh, maybe 1,000 millirems, right, per hour. Dude, they're getting about. They're getting about. This has got to be five, ten. They're getting about 1,100 millirems per hour, bro, per day, per week. Okay, yeah, this is every week. Yeah, this is every week. Every week, dude, they've been fluctuating around 1,100 to 1,500 fucking millirems per every week, bro. Wow. They're right in this round. Gamma radiation. So it'd be glowing in Houston. No, oh, people got a shitload of problems, man. Medical yeah. problems. Yeah. Give me, a, give me another... Give me another state. Okay, I'll just scroll up and have a look at the last. Dude, that's crazy, man. That's fucking crazy. Okay, Boston, we got is... Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to Massachusetts. Lewis. Oh, Boston. Air data. Okay. Okay, let's go to. Damn. Boston got it worse than fucking Houston. These guys are. They're about 1,700, maybe 1,800 uh, millirems per, per, what's this, per week? Yeah, per that's week. That's a lot higher. Air filter analysis. Same shit in, in the air. They have the same shit in the air, man. Gamma emit, emitting radionuclides. And you guys wonder why you got fucking problem. You see, you know, I always you laugh when I see the Chinese walking around with fucking surgical mask on. <laughs> Right? <laughs> now you know fucking why. Because it's not just the particles from the... Yeah, it's just fucking from the polluted exhaust. fucking air. Yeah. It's not from the cars. It's from everything. It's from everything, dude. That's why you have it. That's why in the military... Boston you know, got it bad, you know, dude. You have your nuclear uh, contamination gear. Your NBC yeah, kit. Boston got it. And this is fucking EPA.gov. This ain't no bullshit-ass website. Well, it could be. Yeah, it could be a bullshit website. <laughs> but for yourself... <laughs> Damn, give me one more state. Give me another. Okay, we've got Mitchell. So we've got Cram Hammer, uh, Mitchell from South Dakota. South Dakota. Okay, here we go. I think South Dakota is pretty clean. I think it should be. It should be. Oh, damn. They're up there with Houston. They're up there with Houston, dude. This for every week. Every week, bro. These are high doses, man. This is per hour. I mean, if you're outside and you're fucking inhaling this shit, you're running around doing your nighttime jogging or fitness or whatever that kind of shit, you think you're all healthy. Eating that fucking Monsanto fucking radiated food. You're not. This is Pierre, South Dakota. Pierre, South Dakota. It's crazy, man. Give me, um, who else? One more. Okay. Uh, we've got Dave um, from New Jersey, Denville. Oh, New Jersey is a fucking waste dump anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Edison, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. I'm serious. You know, New Jersey is built on a fucking landfill, dude. That's why when you go to certain parts of this, certain parts of New Jersey, when you enter New Jersey, it smells like shit. 
it really it smells that bad. But look at the radiation level. Look at the gamma radiation level. It's pretty low. Yeah. Not, not too low, but it's low. This is Edison, New Jersey, though. It's lower than the others. It's, it's way lower than the others. But see, you know what I think is lower than the others? Because they're right on the East Coast, so they get that wind blowing that shit that you hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just shoves it across, yeah. They get that, they get that wind blowing that shit, all that shit to the UK. <laughs> Oh, wow, damn. that's not good. That's probably why there's so many deaths in the West, along with all the food and everything else. You're getting, you're getting a radiation dose, aren't you? Well, they don't give you anything for that. Whether it's small or not, you still, you know, gamma rays are not, not the healthiest. United States, man. They don't even have nothing monitoring the rest of the fucking world, bro. No, they keep, keep that quiet. You know, especially if you have in areas, I mean, in the UK, you've got places like Sellafield and other facilities that, you know, some of them are so bad, it makes the the bad ones in the United States look good. So check this out, man. Did you know? Did you know the fucking Dominican Republic had a fucking nuclear power reactor? No. I didn't know that shit either. Radcon. Wow. I didn't know fucking Dominican <laughs> had a fucking nuclear reactor, dude. Wow. How about that shit? And it's out in the middle of fucking nowhere, and nobody probably knows about it. I bet you the people in that country don't know that they got a nuclear reactor smack dab in the middle of the fucking jungle in the Dominican Republic. Because <laughs> you're not going to know, and if it's guarded no. by a government facility, then it's... Yeah. I didn't even know that. Machine guns there quite happily shoot you. I you had know. no idea. I didn't even know that until just now. Puerto Rico, I'm, I'm, I definitely knew because you got the Navy out there. Yeah, yeah. Puerto Rico, I didn't. Big facilities, you know, docks and ports and that. Oh, no, that's not Dominican Republic. That's Dominica. Holy shit. That's the Dominica, not Dominican Republic. Isn't that, that's UK territory, isn't it? I'm not sure. Don't know. Isn't Dominica uh, UK uh Territory? Because you guys own a bunch of the islands out in this place. I didn't know that. Yeah, I think it is. Let me let me get one of these bad boys that's like critical fucking... Okay, here we go. I want this one here. Because this is Radcon 3. Elevated. Elevated. Wow, that's not good. So this Florida here, this St. Petersburg, Florida, and and I guarantee you that the people living in Lowe's City don't know that this fuck, this whole area right here is highly fucking radiated, and this is probably where people live too. This is fucking people's homes. <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? And there's a fucking shopping center, dude. Crowns <laughs> all the damn shit. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, dude. These people probably thought they got a good deal on their houses. And they're living in one of the highest fucking concentrated fucking areas. It's called Intrepid Power Boats. Now, let me tell you something. I'm going to get fucking conspiratorial on this. If this is a company that actually sells power boats, either this is a bullshit company and this doesn't exist here, and there's something underground in this place right here. All right. Because this is a business area. Business and residential. But there's enough radon early warning radiation system. Right Come there. Back. Hot spot right there. Hey, John. What's up? Come back. Look at that shit. Fucking hot spot in St. Petersburg. Those people don't have no fucking clue. Let me go to another hot spot. I want to see if I can find one like this. There's got to be that somewhere. Oh, they got one in North Carolina. Look at these other hot spots in North Carolina. How about New Mexico? New Mexico? Yeah, Area 51, that area. What the fuck is this here? I need to get out of this shit. Wait, New Me you want me to go to New Mexico? Yeah. That's what are you guys searching for? A clue? No, no, no. We were talking about the radiation stuff, and uh, we we looking at some of these hot spots where they located. 
this nu these are nuclear uh, emergency tracking centers. So here's New Mexico. I don't know what the fuck this is. What area is this? This group, this ain't. What the hell is this? This is out in the middle of nowhere. This is probably where they did the um, nu this is where they did the nuclear testing, right? Quite possibly, yeah, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, this is where they did a nuclear test. So that that would be hot, normal. The hot zone, yeah. Yeah, that would be a hot zone. But look at Albuquerque. I bet they've been selective with how many hot zones they've put down there, though. Look at Albuquerque. <laughs> wow, another place that's got high, high elevate. Yeah. Downtown Albuquerque, dude. The New Mexico Bank and Trust. That's where it's located. Yeah, elevated level of radiation there. Something in this building. Could be what's on top of the building too. This they ain't monitoring shit. There ain't nothing on top of it. Let's go to another area. Man, you living in one of these fucking big cities, man. Oh boy. That's oh, banana, that's banana storage. Do, do, do. Here goes one right here. Concern and watch. Ray Radcon 4. California, bro. Oh boy. Wow, so that's what Hope that hopefully it's not where Jaron lives. We know he's out in California, right? Where the fuck is this? This is Sequoia. Where is this? This right outside of San Francisco, right? Eureka, California. Now is that because they're getting the the wash over from Fukushima? Dude, I have no, no, I don't think so. No. This is an old building. <laughs> They're saying this is for concern. They need to watch this fucker. This area. Yeah. These people here have no clue that this whole entire area is being surveilled and monitored. See, you gotta ask yourself, what the fuck happened here? What what is actually there? You know? Yeah. Damn. Why the hell would the US have shit up in Canadian territory, man? Yeah, this is crazy, dude. Most of the shit is just ready Radcon one. But when you look at Radcon two and three levels, I mean shit, you go with John, you're in uh Missouri, right? Yeah, you got safe zones all up in here. Yeah, I'm in Missouri. Look at New York. New York rising. Let me see. That's right on the tip of fucking Manhattan, dude. In Tribeca. Oh, fucking the IRS, dude. <laughs> That's the IRS building. The IRS building, bro. They got this book on the roof, too. Interesting, man. Very interesting. They got a Radcon 3 up in Boston. We were up there, too, weren't we? Radiation. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm convinced now that the radiation levels that exist in the United States and elsewhere are all manufactured radiation zones. They're not natural. There's not shit coming from the ground. They're intentionally got these fucking things out there to kill people. Yeah, we're talking about gamma radiation, Jay. We were looking at the gamma radiation uh, monitoring stations around the United States. Um, Houston had the highest level of fucking gamma radiation exposure. Every week they were exposed to almost 10,000 fucking millirems per hour. Per hour, Jay. It's not good. This one, yeah. Oh, that's fucked up. This, this right across. That's a courthouse? No. JSA Financial Corporation. What else is in this area? <clears throat>
Well, it's interesting that the, the banks have the monitoring stations on. How, the you got the courthouse right across the street. Right across the street. Look at this. It goes to John Adams Courthouse right here. City Hall Plaza. So is that like in the, that's like the top end main monitor? See, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking for these major cities, I'm thinking they have underground nuclear reactors, dude, powering the whole fucking city. I'm thinking that's what that I think. so as well. I think they're underground nuclear, because if you notice, right, especially the ones with the East Coast, you literally could use the seawater, right? Because I know they do it out in California for yeah. the caused by the uh, nuclear reactor. They pull in the seawater. You know, desalinate and shit like that. It used to cool, keep the the, the reactor facility, you know, operating put, at a nominal they level. A, they'll put a system of pipes, piping it in and out. Yeah. Quite happily. Well, for the ones in the middle of the country, though, I these could all be underground. I think they're bullshitting us about fucking energy. We don't need to be fucking fracking and looking for oil. These have to be all fucking connected nuclear fucking power reactors, dude. Power in the whole fucking country. Underground. It has to be, man. The grid, and it is all, it also tie up with all the... Yeah, it just looks like a complete fucking connected grid, dude. Because you, if you had them systems that were underground and the facilities that were kind of contained within that, then that, that would link... You, you, could, you could link all your bases that are underground to them supplies and you'd have power. Yeah, you wouldn't absolutely. even need to have Very your own power. Simple fucking state without one of these fucking in it there ain't a single state every single one of them's got one nobody except for the wyoming dude the only place there ain't a fucking reactor potential reactor and monitoring station is in fucking wyoming guess who live guess whose primary residence is wyoming take a wild guess i'm not um not sure warren motherfucking buffett <laughs> oh, I was gonna not. Keep, he's gonna keep his place clean. The he? second most wealthiest motherfucker on Forbes magazine. Warren fucking Buffett has a house here. He lives here. Yep, Warren Buffett. It's the only state in the United States without one of these monitoring stations or an underground fucking nuclear reactor facility. Well, because we know that they can make these compact nuclear reactors that they, you know, you could have one of a, an equivalent or a larger, you know, similar to like what would be on a submarine. So you can make compact. Oh. You don't have to have a big, massive facility like you see, you know, the main facilities that are surface mounted. I'm saying if you had an underground facility, it'd be more of the compact type still producing, you know, megawatts. Yeah, dude, this is crazy, man. This is absolutely crazy. And you know another place that doesn't have one? No, they, they're on the border with Mississippi. And I can understand why they probably don't have them inside Mississippi because we all know it's floods like a motherfucker through here. So if you if the ground is not stable enough, you got all that ground seeping through, it's going to literally cause that reactor to go critical. Dude, they're bullshitting us about energy, man. I don't live in the United States, so they ain't bullshitting me. They're bullshitting you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they bullshit you. They don't need no fucking oil. It's all nuclear power. It has to be all nuclear power. Well, they phased out a lot of the coal reactors and the gas reactors, <clears throat> saying that they're all dangerous. You know, saying that they pollute this and pollute that. It has to be all nuclear power, man. It's got to be. But so, what the hell you need oil for? What do you need gas for? Money. You gotta have some sort of financial system, man. What yep. the hell is this? Wait a minute. Is this in? Oh shit. That's Japan, minute. yeah. Oh wait a minute, this is Japan. Look at Japan, dude. Damn. This was right too, right? They don't even want to show you where, where was Fukushima at? Wouldn't it way up here? This should still be critical, like a motherfucker, right? Yeah, this should be glowing there. Yeah, yeah, it should be Radcon Five Alert. <laughs> <laughs> And where, where's Fukushima? Damn, where is it, dude? It's, it's down. What, what, what island was it? Is it down or up? Down. It's down? Hey, Robert. Hey, Robert. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wisdom Full Weakness wants you to send them a link. Who's Wisdom Full Luke. Weakness? I tell him I sent it to his email, dude. So what? 
What, wait, wait, what city was it in, dude? I forget. Where was Fukushima? At? It's in yeah, down where pretty much where you are now, kind of thing. I'm just trying to look. Uh, yeah, this ain't it. No. Let's have a look in there. Type, pull it up and tell me what city it was in so I can go to it. Because it should be fucking Radcon 4 Concern Watch or Radcon 5. And this is updated. It shows the fucking time. Dude, where the fuck is that, man? Is it Yakashima? Fukushima, yeah. What island was it on, dude? Somebody got to pull this up. Come on, man. Help me out of here. I'm looking now. Dude, this shit is crazy. I'm just looking now. I'm going to be able to bring it up. Right. Daiichi. Daiichi? So let's have a look. So that's just, so it's above Toka. And let's get a better map. So it's just below Sendai, like I said, so weren't too far off that. So let me see where you are on that. So yeah, Sendai is further up. Okay, so go further up. Yeah, so it's kind of like... Probably where that nuclear... Yeah, they don't make it very clear. Oh, bro. So it's on the Fukushima is on the city of called Tuma. Tu oh, Tuma. here it is, Fukushima. Yeah. There it is. Below Magda and above top. Wait a fucking minute, man. Sen here's Sendai. Yeah. You say it's below Sendai? Yeah, it should be just around about there, yeah. Dude, we ain't going Fukushima right here. Hey, Robert. Okay. What, what's up? Uh, Luke and a wisdom of full weakness said the links are not working. Man, come on, bro. Man, he's going to have to stay. I sent it to him, dude. It should be working. Damn. He's going to make me go. I can send it. Nah, I'm, I'm doing a share screen. Send it to him, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send yeah, it. Yeah, just send it to him. So, so this is where the Fukushima power plant was, right? Over in this area. This is where it was. Now, I don't give a fuck that they turned it off. But why isn't it showing anything at all? Was Fukushima a bunch of bullshit? Can we say that? Well, if they've turned it off, it's questionable, isn't it? Yeah. Why would they do I mean, can that? We, can we really honestly say that? <clears throat> Jay, what do you think, man? What's because that? it's a real-time map, Jay. It's close to real-time. It's showing today's date, 8, 9, at 7 p.m. This and is what's your question? It's showing 8, 9 p.m. This is This is animated. Yeah, what's the question? Can we say that Fukushima maybe was just fucking bullshit? Based on what? Based on this fucking map, John. There goes Fukushima right here. The fucking reactor is way the hell over here, dude. This Fukushima here. The reactor, as you keep going, the power station is out in this area. Here goes the power station right here. Where supposedly that accident occurred. Yeah, the city. Remember, the tsunami came over this fucking seawall. The tsunami came over this seawall. Right. I remember the video like it was yesterday. Yeah, right, right. So can we say that Fukushima didn't happen? What the I, fuck, bro? I, I don't know it why we would say that. Here. It sure as hell didn't happen here, John. Because here goes the city of Fukushima right here. Yeah, but. I don't. I'm not seeing the connection. What do you, what, dude, dude? Did you go away and drink? <laughs> I think it's probably because. It, what do you what mean you don't see the connection? What there should happen is that there was a nuclear accident, a fallout. Three, three, yeah. three nuclear power stations are meant to blow blowing up, and they, that means you've got three times the equivalent of what happened at Chernobyl. 
Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's, Ch- it's Chernobyl on steroids, that. which means that area should be lighting up like a Christmas tree. Exactly. So you should be seeing a shitload of these monitoring stations. So all they should the be four, four or five or five or above, you know, because you're not going to get that amount of radiation that, that they haven't cleared up that's still there pumping out, supposedly. I mean, they show all of this, the coastline being monitored of every station they have. That should, they should, all should be black. Come on, dude. Yeah. I, I, I ain't gonna go look at Okinawa. We know there's a military base well, here. As an example, that there was more radiation in America than there was in Fukushima. Yeah. In in, in uh, LA, wasn't it? Or no, yeah. California. Yep. So that's that in itself. You know, why would you have more in the US than you would at, in Japan when they've had a nuclear disaster? Yeah, I think I don't understand why that that that's not even registering here, man. Either the nuclear thing is a load of, of BS, or the or these these yeah, mono, it, these monitoring that, stations are that, or you know, it's it's one or the other. It really is clear, isn't it? It has to be, man. You you can't you can't you can't come to any other conclusion. It's got to be bullshit. Yep. I mean, that whole this whole area should be lit the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should. This whole area, they should be monitoring all over this. They were supposed to be monitoring the entire fucking coastline, man. This whole coastline should be monitored. They should be monitoring this all along this. And those are the ones that would be the highest active because that's where you got all the outflow. From if the you look at the RADCON levels, right? They're supposed to be watching this shit. It should show this level right here, RADCON 4 or RADCON 5. Yeah. That's what it should be showing along this coastline here. It's not showing that. So that the, uh, either the sensors are lying to give people a, a, a false reality of what's duped. happening, or You've been duped, duped, duped. Yep, I think dupe. I think dupe. <laughs> again, duped again. <laughs> again, duped. All right, we read through all that shit, Robert. The whole damn thing, man. Awesome. That whole thing. So let me stop sharing the screen here, and we're gonna talk to everybody out there. John, anything you want to bring up, bro, for the last show? Johnny? Yeah, I'm still here. Anything you want to talk about since this is the last hoorah? Um, Nana, Nana says that I'm way, you are way off. Way off from what, Nana? Futaba. Futaba what? From where Fukushima is meant to be. Well, I, I still think but the whole area should be. Where I was way off at, there should have been, there should have been literally, the ledger shows that it should have been a Radcon 4, Radcon 5 area, even along the coastline. We didn't see that at all. She says, go to Google Earth. That's where we were. It was using the Google Earth platform. There is no last show. Yes, there is, Allison. This is the last one. I'm sorry. All right. So, John, don't have anything else to talk about. <laughs> We're going to bring this to a close, and I'm sorry. Just like Cal Burnett says, I'm so glad we had this time together. Right? We've had a good time. We really have. I've had a good time with all of you. Like I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give my email, okay? Anybody can email me at any time. I check it on a regular basis, all right? And when I say regular, I mean the shit just pops up on my fucking phone, right? Here's my Skype ID. You can call me if you want to chat, share some information, or just shoot the shit and say, hey, Robert, how you doing? What's going on? You know, you come up with any new information. So if you want access to the cloud account, you're going to have to email me. I'll send you an invitation. There are people who have access to it. Robert, please. The- Explain the conversation with you and Lee. No, I'm sorry, real eyes, real eyes. I'm not going to explain that. It's already been explained. So if you missed it, here's what happened. In a fucking nutshell, someone who pretended to be my friend for over four months, we were having private conversations. I was upset. I was angry. I was ranting just like everybody else does. When you fucking angry with somebody, you say shit to somebody else, you know, you you just having a talk with and you talk shit about it. Those calls were four fucking goddamn motherfucking months ago. 
They were not just fucking weeks ago. So this guy didn't tell me he was recording the fucking phone calls. He didn't get my permission. None of that shit. He just did it for his own fucking purposes and benefits to bring attention to the shit he talks about. So if you go into his motherfucking channel, you see the shit he talks about. If you want to follow him, fucking follow him. But where I come from, my friends are out there in chat. If we talk to each other, I consider you my fucking friend. We don't record each other's phone calls. But where I grew up in the South Bronx, you record somebody's fucking phone call, you either a fucking snitch or you're an informant. And snitches and informants, they get what's fucking coming to them. Period. I'm not gonna do shit to this motherfucker. Karma's a bitch. Everybody gets what's coming to him. But before that shit came out on fucking YouTube, I had a conversation with Bob Noble. Period. As far as I'm concerned, we're cool. Bob, he says shit about me too. The shit wasn't recorded. I never heard it, but I can just imagine what the fuck is being said about me behind fucking closed doors when you're talking with your fucking friends. I just, my shit happened to be recorded. It came out there. I didn't fucking apologize to the shit. I didn't take that shit back. I said it. That's me. Period. You don't fucking like it? Hey, fuck you. But where I come from, friends don't do that shit. That motherfucker's not my fucking friend. And had I been living in the United States, same motherfucking county as him, I'd have kicked his motherfucking door down and smashed his fucking jaw in 19 fucking places. So understand, I don't appreciate that type of shit. You got a problem with me? You send me an email, let me know. I got a fucking problem with you, man. I want to talk to you. Because I've actually had people email me, give me their fucking phone numbers, we get into an argument, and the next thing you know, we're fucking best fucking friends, man. Fuck you, David. So, back on point. I really enjoyed this, but I'm going somewhere else. I'm doing something else. It's about my family. It's about... Longevity, safety, security, living a full, complete life, okay? Raising my son, who turned three this month. I'm going to be spending more time with my son. I'm going to be maintaining my focus on my studies, and I'm going to be working with a group of people who want to take advantage of my skill sets, my knowledge, my expertise, and my capabilities. I ain't going to go any further than that. I'm off fucking social media. You ain't gonna find me on Facebook because I don't fuck around with fuck book or Facebook. You ain't gonna find me on fucking LinkedIn. You ain't gonna find me on YouTube. I ain't gonna have no sock puppet account. None of that shit. I'm out. I'm gone. History. You wanna talk to me? Send me an email. Hit me up on Skype. Let's have a conversation about anything. I don't give a fuck what it's about. All right? And and whoever ex stranger ex is, don't be a dick to your son. I don't need you to tell me the fuck on how to be a parent. I love my son more than my own life. If anybody or anything threatened his existence, I'll fucking make this planet fucking unlivable for the next thousand years. That's how much I love my son. My son and I enjoyed a life together 20 years before he was born. And now that he's here, I'm going to cherish every fucking superluminal second with him. I ain't going to let nothing take me away from that. I ain't going to let anything distract me from that. Period. I don't need to be told how to be a fucking father. I'm the most capable goddamn fucking parent and father to my son on this fucking earth. Ain't nobody can be a better father than my son than me. He chose me. He's my best friend. He's my boss. He's my CEO. He's the chairman of the board. I work for him. Every dollar I make, 75 cents goes to him, his future, his security. So I had fun. I really did. But this wasn't about getting on social media and having fun. It was about sharing what I've been exposed to, what have I, I've experienced, what I've been involved in. And I've been involved on the, 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 the dark side, the shadow side, and all different sides. I've been there, done that. I am a motherfucking jack of all trades. Jumped out of airplanes in the middle of the fucking night in foreign fucking countries. Fought in other foreign fucking lands. 
taking care of people, saved people's lives, made mistakes all through my 40 plus years. And now I've been given an opportunity to take all of that and put it towards not just something positive, but something that's sustainable. And I was called upon to do that. I didn't seek to do that. I was called upon to do it. I had some people, a group reached out to me and says, we really like what you're doing. We've been looking at some at you for a while. We know you were interested in some things. Would you be interested in such and such? And yes, I am. So I'm taking. But you, I'm not coming back. I will always be available on email and Skype. And if I'm not available on Skype, send me an email. All right. But these guys on the panel, people out in the chat, you know who you are. You know how to get a hold of me. If somebody else wants to get a hold of me and I'm not available through the normal channels, you know, let me know who it is. I'll give you my information or whatever. But I'm not about the drama, people. I never have been, never will be. I got to end all objective and goal. And my son gave me purpose in this life. I know what I'm here for. I know what I'm supposed to be doing and who I'm supposed to be doing it for. You guys became part of that journey. And I want to thank you very much, and I, I appreciate that shit. John said to me, you're not going to cry, are you? I almost fucking did just now. I almost did just now. But I will, I will always be available, people. And uh, please do email me. You can all, The channel's going to stay up. The video's going to stay up. If you don't know who I am and what I'm about, fucking start from the very goddamn fucking beginning. Go to the channel, to all the videos, and start from video number one. And even if it takes you, fuck, you look at one video per week while you're going to sleep or working out or whatever have you, some of the shit you're going to be able to stomach and tolerate, some of the shit you're not going to like, some of the shit you're going to laugh at, some of the shit you're going to be like, holy crap, I can't believe he talked about this. Regardless, listen to what I'm saying. Don't listen to how I'm saying it. Listen to what I'm saying. Because every fucking word I spoke in these fucking videos, that's me. I'm passionate about the truth. And you'll hear that in the tone and the manner in which I deliver it. You can call me whatever name you want to call me. But what it comes down to is this. It's not what you fucking know. It's what you can prove. And I think I've done my part in trying to provide the best fucking proof possible that... Everything we've been fucking told, I don't give a shit how old you are, is all bullshit. Ain't nothing real. Quantum mechanics and quantum science is bullshit. They try hey, whoa, 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 whoa. No, I ain't saying all of it is, John. <laughs> Come on, man. Dude, there's a reason why they call it a monologue. You know what the fuck that means, man? I'm just fucking with you, Jay. But other than that, this is really, truly the final video I will ever do. There may come a day where you might see me fucking on a talk show, or on the news, on television, or standing in front of a podium as the deputy director of something, or who knows, the associate director, or you know, director or manager. If you do one day, you'll know, shit, I'm glad that guy's on our side because I am on your side. I am on your side. All right. You need anything from me? Email me. Hit me up on Skype. I'm not shy. I'm not shy at all. But this is it, people. These videos are a compilation of just about everything you'll hear about the flat earth and science and our world in probably about 100 plus videos. If I didn't cover it, I apologize. That leaves the door wide open for the rest of you to put together something to continue on, just like they do in research studies, that when someone writes a research paper, they make a conclusion and a recommendation of what someone else would need to do to continue on and advance in the thinking and the critical analysis, research and development. So I'm leaving you with this show to tell you, you've got enough information to go out there now 
and put out some unbelievable information that can be much more clear and concise and palatable and tolerable and constructive and informative and detailed than I did. Because I didn't put any money into how I was doing it and 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 how it was going to be put together. It just naturally just came to me and I just did it. All right. It's not fancy. It's raw. It's in your face. And not one video was done to insult, inflame, disrespect, disparage or ridicule any one single person. If I said something in a video that hits a fucking nerve, instead of making a comment, a negative comment, telling me you don't fucking like this, you don't like that, and I'm this, and I'm a piece of shit, and whatever, you need to ask yourself, damn, he said something that really pissed me off. That shit must apply to me because it pissed me off. So again, I love every fucking single human being on this planet. We all are born geniuses, but we choose to be ignorant. And I fucking am disgusted with the concentration of ignorance that I'm being exposed to on a daily basis. And that's why I surround myself around the people who are watching it, the listening, and the guys that were on the panel, and the guys who have been on the panel. Because they, they, they provide the equilibrium to my thinking, my demeanor, my behavior, my attitude. And I've gone off fucking reservation a few times. I've said things to people that, you know, I'm not saying I should have said it, but I said it. It might have been at the wrong fucking time and in the wrong manner, but I fucking said it. And I don't take any of that shit back. I own it. Take ownership. You're responsible for yourself. You want to put your security, safety, and stability in somebody else's hands and, and rely on them to guide you through whatever fucking journey and darkness you're going to be venturing into, then be ready to be surprised because you're going to be surprised. You're not going to see me on anybody else's channel, any shows. You're not going to see me on any, anybody else's chats. You're not going to see me making comments on anybody else's channel. I will be available to anybody and everybody through email or Skype. And, you know, Nora, I talk to her at will. My son's got a name for her. Marcus, that's my surrogate European father. <laughs> Robert Shortman is my brother. John is my brother. Martin is my brother. Juan Carlos, definitely my virtual brother. If I haven't spoken to you before and you think you want to get a little bit closer to me, then it's time for us to talk. Don't be shy. I ain't going to put your fucking number up on YouTube and tell everybody, oh, I know who this person is. Oh, shit, you want to call them. I ain't that type of fucking high school person to write, hey, for a good time, call Sally, call this number. I don't do that shit. What we talk about is between me, you, and John's God he believes in. And it stays that way. But I'm done, people. Social media was not for me when I started, and I realized it really isn't for me because I like my privacy. I like my anonymity. I like my security and my safety. And if I let, if I continued on with this and let this shit grow to the point that where it would be 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people, 100,000 people subscribe and wanting me to continue doing this shit, then some, I'm going to be forced to come out of the fucking shadows. And I do not like the light. I do not like the spotlight. I despise it. I don't like attention. I don't like it. I never have. I never have, and I don't want it. So I know I'll be sharing information with Robert Shortman. I'm gonna be doing some field videos and stuff like that. Um, Vivian and I are still gonna do that high-speed camera film, filming yeah, amazing. Room. We're gonna do that. We're gonna give it to Robert Shortman. He's gonna put it up on this channel. John and Robert Shortman are gonna be doing some shows together. And um, there are gonna be some other people I'm gonna share information with. I know Martin and I, we love reading. So we're gonna be sharing information back and forth together with, with material we find in history. And anybody, everyone else out there who's been sending me emails and we share information back and forth, yeah, you better believe it. I want When you send me the information, be ready to have a conversation with me because all that shit you guys have been sending me, that shit is some interesting reading, man. 
really. I wish I could read everybody's emails and then do a video about the shit. But I'm finished. I'm not saying I can't do it anymore, but I'm choosing not to. Because I just, I'm, I'm not a spotlight grabber. I'm not an attention grabber at all. I do this to share the knowledge and information and data with everyone else and to get you guys input and opinions and, and, and insight so that we can all learn together. That's what we've been doing, learning together. I didn't learn the shit on my own. I learned things from John. I learned things from Robert. I learned things from all of you out there. And I really do appreciate all the support you guys have given all this whole time. So please don't be shy. Email me, Skype me. I'll put it out there again. And, you know, I even respond to fucking trolls, man, who call me all kinds of names and shit like that, you know? But lately, I gotta be careful because talking to the wrong person, my fucking calls get recorded and shit. I might say something to share with somebody I think I'm comfortable with. And then the next thing you know, they're trying to get me fucking killed. So there you go. My email, my Skype, don't be shy. If you want access to the box files, believe me, there's a shitload of stuff in there you guys gonna love. You think the stuff I've been putting on some of these videos is good? Wait till you see what's in the box files. Martin, uh, uh, Robert, John, uh, Nora, they can all tell you, there's some good shit in there. I still haven't yeah. talked about it yet. Tori Mc McVoy says, give us at least fucking uh, uh, an F-bomb for prosperity. All right. <laughs> all right. Look, One for the road. <laughs> one for the road. One for the road. Look, here's the thing. There's some fucking stupid people out there. You all know who they are. I'm not speaking to anyone directly. I'm not speaking about any one specific group. They know who the fuck they are. If anything comes out of good, what I did is that a few of these channels are actually starting, even some of the trolls are starting to use my model with showing documentation as an example of how they're starting to change, how they're presenting information. They're starting to look at it from a scientific point of view, a critical analysis point of view, putting the pieces together. Anybody who's going to fucking put up a video about somebody else to talk shit about them and not keep that shit on fucking point, it is up to you if you want to continue to be involved in that fucking drama. Because if you want motherfucking drama, email me. I'll give you some motherfucking drama. Do that shit. But I got bigger fucking things to do to really get control of this out of control shit that's going on in all our lives. I'm not gonna fucking talk about it anymore. It's time for me to be about it. That's why I have to leave. That's why I have to stop this shit. Because I ain't got the time to talk about this shit and not put equal time into being about it. So I'm being called to be about it, not fucking talk about it. I got no problem with nobody out there. You could have cursed me out. Guess what? If we were face to face, I'd fucking give you the biggest goddamn fucking bear hug and probably give you a fucking hickey on your fucking cheek. And you'd be mad as hell with me. Like, dude, come on, man. Don't be touching me like that. Man, fuck you. That's the type of guy I am. But if you fuck with me, like I said in one of those fucking calls, you are, if you haven't heard it, I will fuck you up. One way or another, virtually or fucking physically. I don't even like spanking my own son. I gave him a little tap on his ass the other day. He got upset with me. He got upset because daddy never did that before. I hate it. I feel terrible. But when you got a two-year-old running around throwing his fucking cars around the house and shit at his mother, you got to put some discipline. You got to be a daddy. But to you adults out there, you need a fucking friend, I can be your fucking friend. You want an enemy? I'm going to kill you with kindness. 
you fuck with me, I'm gonna fucking bury you. Cause I don't fuck with you. Don't fuck with me. Enjoy these videos. Please continue to enjoy these videos that I put up. I took two, one hour to two hours, three hours out of my life for the past, what, seven, eight, nine months to share everything I could possibly share with you in, in the most complete manner possible. If you haven't seen all these videos, watch them all. Watch them once, twice, three times. Believe me, you're gonna see something, you're gonna hear something that'll wake you up and says, holy shit, I didn't know this. I got some information that can go along with this. Let me do a video. Feel free to share my videos. Share my videos. And just to let you guys know, all right, whatever money is on YouTube, Whatever money is on YouTube and that AdSense, you got my word on this, all right? I'm going to be dispersing those funds. Robert's been on the channel with me. John's been on the channel with me. I just figured out, figured out how to get that fucking money out there. I'm going to be sending John a fucking Western Union, Robert a Western Union, any and everybody who's ever shared my videos and put it out there. I'm taking that money and I'm sending you a fucking Western Union. I don't need it. That money's going back to the community. You got my fucking word on that. You got my word on that. I will send you a motherfucking Western Union or whatever, however the fucking way you want it. I don't fuck with PayPal because I actually sued them. <laughs> so they don't even want me to set up an account. My, my, my wife's got one though. So I'll get my wife to send it. She got a PayPal account. But I'm gonna put that money back into the community. That's where it's going to. That's where it's going to. So please don't be shy. I want to hear from you guys. I know you want to hear from me, but don't count on me telling you any details about some of the shit I'm doing because you, I ain't going to be able to tell you. But I'm going to be there for any and everybody that wants to talk. Anybody, anybody wants to share anything. Okay? Thank you guys. I really do appreciate it. If anybody else got any questions out there in chat, Speak now forever, hold your peace, or shoot me an email or hit me up on Skype. Other than that, I'm so glad we had this time together. I'm so glad we, I've got the fucking words, man. Damn. Other than that, you know my motto. It's not what you know, it's what you can prove. Take care of yourselves. Be good, stay safe, and keep fucking kicking the shit out of the fucking truth. All right? Peace out, people.